You say what? Yeah. What'd you say? No more pussy for no more. No more. No more. No more. None of that. None of that. All that, all that shit is dead. All that shit is dead. Yeah. Gone. Yeah. Uh, which, what you can do is you can put no more of that. Get it all, get me out. Uh, oh, yeah. We definitely going to grab the bottle and have it over here. Yeah, yeah, you can bring it over here, but it's about gone now, you feel me? Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, pour it. Yeah, pour it. <laughs> Yes, sir. Uh, I think he might be drinking some crown, so you can throw that crown over here. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna quit. Nah. Nah, none of this is clay. Shit, I'm throwing like my nail right I'm bringing some Hindo. Yes. Okay. Do you record over there? On the audio? No. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. Uh, All right. He's recording? He's on recording? Okay, that's good. Should we flip it? I said not. I'm sorry about that. Okay, for real though, what it do, what it does. It's Dilly and Don with the Locomotives Podcast Show. We got a very special guest here, CJ. Um, he's actually gonna do something very, very interesting for us. What are you gonna do for us today, man? All right, so today, while we talk, I need you to do one of your famous drops. It can be the first style that you have. So what's good to y'all out there? Right? Okay. What's good? So, yeah, while we talk, and then at the end, we have to see what you All right, cool. Yeah. 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 I personally love your art. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. You know this stuff. Yeah, I know that. Yeah. But I, I appreciate you saying it. Of course. Nice, man. I'm glad that you like his art. I personally have never seen his art before, so, you know what I'm saying? You guys will be seeing it at the same time as me, so shit. So that's, well, um, while we're talking about it, you want to go ahead and get into it? Yeah, so uh, what what type of art do you make, man? What, what's... You know, okay, so it's totally folk. I don't, um, I never went to school for art at all, like not even in high school or middle school that I did any art classes. Um, I grew up and my dad was a graphic artist and he was just like, hey, here, do this, try this. And, you know, so certain things over time clicked and just stuck with me and I just kind of ran with it. And uh, I don't know, I have like, uh, just like focus issues sometimes, but every now and then, or not every now and then, but when I was a kid, what I did was just like, I would have trouble focusing on something else, but if I just sat down and like had to listen to something, if I was drawing, um, it was so easy to focus on the speaker. Like I did that in church. I grew up drawing in church all the time. Nice. Uh, yeah. And uh, kind of church. Uh, Christian, you know, Church of God. Church of God. Yeah, the one, the one place. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They preach Jesus, so you know that's what's up. Anyways, uh, yeah, like. Just grew up doing that, and then eventually, like around, you know, middle school or something, I stopped drawing. It was all like, you know, small character design things and like monsters, you know, stuff like that up to that point. Um, and then, like after high school, I was like, yeah, I kind of want to pick a pen back up again, just try things out. And so I started doing just kind of more abstract, like flowy stuff. Right. Because I was uh, just kind of feeling like. A little directionless kind of wanted to just make that uh, a thing visually, and I've just kind of run with it. So anything that makes you kind of like a little nauseous when you first look at it, and okay. kind of twist your head like, "Am I looking at it right?" That's the kind of art that I, I know that there's a lot of different types of genres of art. Um, but do you do you feel like you're in any type of box or category? Yeah. Um, funny. So there was this dude that I met the other day who like saw my art super just happenstance. And in person, and he was like, "Oh, dude, that's so sick! That's like Theta RGB." Okay, I, I thought that was a cool. What, what is Theta RGB? RGB? I don't know what that is. Well, I looked it up. It's not a thing. But like, so I so I, I, just, I just, think just, you know, I like what it's seen. He was like, um, "Looks like there's one thing that you later looked up." Was yeah, yeah, like, like, yeah, like <laughs> yeah. No, seriously, like it didn't mean anything. There's nothing on the web that defines what a Theta RGB style is. So, but you had a lot of LED light advertisements and search results. Right. Are you, are you looking for lights right now? Right. No, I'm you know, not, not currently. They're not. Your art is very abstract, I will say. But like in a sense that when I first saw it, it reminds me of uh, a Where's, Where's Waldo kind yeah. of scavenger hunt, but full of different, like you said, wild depictions of things that just make you uncomfortable at first, make you nauseous. And so. Yeah. Um, 
It's I've, I've had artwork described as a psychedelic Where's Waldo before. Yeah. So that's hilarious. It's really nice. Um, that's kind of why I like it. Thank you. Yeah. But yeah, I'll just I'll just start doing that and um, and we can keep talking or whatever. But uh, if you guys have any ideas or whatever, I don't I don't usually like have an idea. Of no, what I'm you're you're good, bro. So I just want to know like. What's your like inspiration for for like your drawings? Do you feel like you draw off of emotion, or is it just kind of off feels, or what? Um. So okay, so a couple things. Like, I love cars. I love computers. What's your favorite just car? Gear stuff like that. What's your favorite? Oh, that's car? a good question, dude. Um, like a '73 FJ40. Fuck yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, old school Toyota. I feel that. I'm a Chevelle kind of guy. Okay. Hell yeah. I, I like, like 70 Chevelles, bro. Yeah. Hell yeah. I like point it and drive. You know, just like you take off and nothing's going to stop you because it's just a beast. Hell yeah. I'm a big fan of coupes. Okay. I'm a coupe kind of guy. Like newer, like JDM 90s coupes? Or? Uh, Japanese coupes are pretty cool, but I like the old mini coupers. Those are cool. Oh, yeah. Those are cool. You're over with them. That's a, that's a groovy car. Hell yeah. Very cool. I feel that shit, man. Well, um, well, yeah, bro. I just, um, I just was wondering because, like, he he talks about you. You're like kind of have like this almost uh, not hallucinogenic, but like uh, <laughs> this kind of trippy kind of style of art. So I'm just kind of wondering what kind of made you want to make this this type of art. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So full disclosure, I was like really interested in trying LSD at the end of, <laughs> at the end of high school and, and straight up like marijuana too. So I, I hadn't drank, I had smoked, I had like, I think I might have puffed Cool Whip one time when I was like 13. Right, okay. And I didn't do anything because I did. I wanted to wait until I was 18 at the very least. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be like responsible for my actions. Of course. So... I actually grew my own marijuana before I ever tried it. Wow. And uh, it was shit. Uh, <laughs> I mean, of course. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't like as horrible as I guess it could have been, but um, it was definitely not primo. So I like fumbled my way through rolling on that and at the same time was like really trying to find uh, my connection for acid. I was going to UTK. I feel that. Do you feel like people, like, you feel like some people, because me, myself, I honestly feel like I started smoking weed a little a little early. I started smoking weed when I was like 14. Uh, that was like my first time smoking weed when I was like 14 was with my cousins and shit like that. But I mean, I can't really act like where I came from had anything to do with it. But I mean, it was the vibe out where I'm from. Yeah. Um, so it definitely was the environment a little bit. But I mean, I had cousins and I told them that, yeah, I had smoked prior prior to this, yeah, I, I smoke all the time and shit like that, they're like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, what else are you gonna see, what you gonna see, shit, man, we was in that hot box, bro, I took, like, a couple of hits, and I was like, bro, get me out of this shit now, <laughs> I, I thought I was dying, bro, my heart was racing, bro, I was looking at the time, and the time was not fucking moving, I was like, hey, it's still 530, on me, bro, I was like, I was geek, but <laughs> what I'm getting to is, do you feel like some people, they start off too early with, like, experiencing drugs and stuff like that? Yeah, I, I, would, I would totally agree, um, I, I, I will cover that, why do you feel like it? For me, I feel like it just, so I didn't smoke until my freshman year of college. Mm -hmm. And then even, it took me even longer to buy my own weed. Like that was a whole, that was when I <laughs> acknowledged with myself that yeah, I smoked now. Because before I smoked wax, you know what I'm saying? So I actually did LSD before I even smoked. Because mainly I was still doing a competition for martial arts. Right. So I didn't want to fuck mm -hmm. up my breathing and everything. And I was more so interested in all the trippy, like, psychedelic shit. So, of course, you could see some crazy shit. Yeah. I already knew what weed was. Like, you weren't going to see any crazy shit on weed. So, mm -hmm. I was like, I'll start with LSD. But I think people start to early just because the environment. I feel that. But it's cooler. Oh, so, I feel like, for me at least, and not everybody is like that. A lot of people, they have real, um, I guess, they want to explore, they want to explore new shit, experience new shit, but I just was so satisfied with weed whenever I was smoking, I was like, shit, what the fuck else, I don't need anything else, like, what the, I was actually scared to take any type of drug other than weed, like, for a very long time, actually, like, um, like, I was like, so honestly, maybe, I want to say, maybe like a year ago, it was like my very first time taking shrooms, 
um, and shit, bro, like, it took a lot for me to, like, actually fucking take that shit, like, it was a lot of convincing, into the yeah, bro, it was, like, a lot of convincing that happened, a lot of peer pressure, you know what I'm saying, but I, eventually I was all like, you know what, yeah, because, especially when you want in the trips, you always have to have a good mindset, and that's something that I didn't know that you had to have, so in my mind, I was already thinking, oh shit, like, well, this is about to be crazy. You gotta be ready for a trip, but you're yeah, never ready for it. That is very true, you're never really ready for it. And it's trip. one of those things, like, it's like jumping off a really high uh, elevation into some water, you feel me? That's it's just, true, yeah. Like, can you do it? Yeah. Can, can you go down a rabbit hole? Can you see that, yo? And that's why I feel like people learn so much about themselves through that experience, is because, like, you just get... I don't know, like just rushed with so many feelings and so much energy and so many emotions. It's just like, wow, what the fuck do I do with all this shit? Uh, I'm weird as fuck. My first time on shrooms, I got a crazy fucking workout in. I took shrooms and hit the gym and went that wild. Wild. So wild, wild, right? So wild. And I, I like to be in public. Exactly. When That's crazy. But I will say that I was like working out a lot at that time. So working out was almost like an escape for me. So with my mind being so crazy, I was like, I've got to go to the gym and calm myself down. So I hit the gym on shrooms. It was wild as fuck. Try to. <laughs> All right, so, so take that for a second. So you remember that time we were walking through the woods? Yes. Uh, the, uh, like Lake Harry? Yes. The hurricane. Just yes. I had, stuff and at that time, I've never taken shrooms before. That walk down there, I got into some pride. And I had taken shrooms before. I was in a primal state. Like, I yes. was walking through the woods feeling like, yo, I'm just walking. I'm a random guy just walking through the woods, connecting with mm -hmm. nature right now. I could feel my heartbeat and I could feel the earth pulsing around. We didn't have shoes on. Well, I mean, Eli, you didn't have, yeah, Eli Eli didn't have, have shoes, shoes on. on. He was like, fuck all that, but. <laughs> <laughs> fuck all that. If they were, bro, they were tripping, bro. They were, exactly. If they were tripping. I knew what they were like, like nigga, take your shoes off, nigga. It's a whole nother experience. I'm like, bruh. I'm good, cause I just was, I just had been smoking weed. Yeah. Them niggas was tripping. They were like, Nah, bro, take them shoes off. It's <laughs> gonna change some, cause take them clothes off. When you were at the gym, when you were working out, did you feel that same like kind of primal instinct, or what? What was that working out? So what I felt like was nobody better fucking come talk to me, or I'm gonna everything, every, like I'm gonna scream at them. I'll be like, What? What? Like I'm gonna be crazy if they come and talk to me. So, I went my because I there's so many people at the gym that I see every time I go, and I was like, fuck, I hope I don't come in contact with one of them niggas. Oh, you know, so see social fear. Like, yeah, and talk and do all that shit. How you doing today, man? I'm off shrooms right now, man. <laughs> fuck off, man. Like, <laughs> well, I, I, I definitely think that people can start stuff too early, and like the pro so there are a couple of reasons that someone could approach that. Uh, for starters, and probably the most obvious is just like de for development reasons, right? You're like, why would you start altering things when like you're still like you're in the prime mm -hmm. peak, yeah. I guess, whatever of your um, d just development, development socially right? and mentally, uh, honestly, physically too, yeah. uh, stuff like that. I mean, some people still haven't really got their immune systems figured out by like 12, 13, 14, and they're not that responsible when they start. Right. Like, you start huffing backwards like it's nothing at, like, 14. Yeah. Years. Like, nah, son, shut up. And smoke a bowl or something if you're right. smoking. Right, because it's still nicotine. And, like, right. I mean, like, we know. Like, we're not yeah. dumb about this. Like, we know that there's problems with that. But even outside of that, say you're just, like, I am super healthy. I, uh, it, you know, you're this person is a responsible 15-year-old or whatever. I still don't think that's a good age to start doing LSD, even if it's, uh, safe. Yeah, it's already a mind altering. It's, it's very a much a mind altering. Yeah. And uh, I wish I don't leave. I don't like oh, LSD. Yeah. Compared to shrooms, like LSD is too intense. Yeah. And, everything. <laughs> and shrooms are like it's wide. So that's the thing that I wanted to talk about as well was that like uh, how different like fucking acid is or LSD is from shrooms. Yeah. Like completely different. Not vastly different because they're they're similar. But you know when you're but you know when you're yeah good. exactly. Acid feels way, way more like chemically, like I almost you can feel taste, it. You can, you taste can it. feel yourself You can digesting. taste that shit. You can feel yourself type down. Honestly yourself. honestly I thought I was crazy because I felt like I was tasting some shit, but I'm glad that you no, just said that. Yeah, I definitely tasted like it's That's tastes how you way know different. if you have a real acid or not. So if you don't have that taste it it could be N B O and E. 
Is it? I think it's actually the opposite. Is it not? Yeah, it's the opposite. So it shouldn't be, it, it, if there is a taste at all, it should be very, very lightly metallic. Yeah. But it shouldn't be bitter. Like, you shouldn't put it in your mouth yeah. and go, oh, oh that, that taste. Well, no, that's not it. It's like the, it's how your teeth feel and how your tongue feels. Oh, it's like the afterwards. The it's the oh, afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not like while it's in there. While it's in there, it's just fucking, it's like a piece of paper, yeah. So, it's funny. Um, don't do drugs, bitch. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this, this is all just for educational purposes and uh, harm reduction. But yeah. seriously, though, I, uh, I, I'm obsessive, right? I, I'm really obsessive. When I want to get into something, I just want to 110% now. And I'm exactly the same way. And I, I think that's like a good survival technique mm -hmm. because then you're familiar with things and. Mm -hmm. You know, confidence is just generally higher that way. But I'm not intimidated by those things exa off rip either. Exactly. Like you, you know what's coming. But so with acid, I was like, I'm gonna conquer this. You know. So I, I probably took uh, like a half of tabs worth or whatever from this just street dealer that I had met, and it was supposed to be a full tab, but looking back, it was probably a half tab. Wrote a bunch of notes. I was like, this is super cool. Need to find a way to get just clean stuff. So I found clean stuff. Via the dark web, shout out. Um, shout out to the dark so web. Really. <laughs> yeah. You know what? The Silk Road. Uh, actually, that right after true. Silk Road, it was shut down. So I started with what is that called again? The Silk Road. It's in marketplace on the, on the dark. Oh shit. Okay. Yeah. I started with Dream, I think, and then it moved to Nightmare, ironically, and then there were some other ones. Dude, Cannabis Growers and Merchants Co-op. Shout out to all the people who used to get their cannabis and mushrooms from that site because it was the best place ever. Never, ever, ever got scammed from there. And it was an invite only community. Nice. And everybody was just A1. Nice. Um, but no, I, saw, I took acid like a bunch of times, moving from that roughly half tab up to, well, the most I've ever taken is 30. But 11, 11 was the highest. 30? I ever took. Yeah. Damn. 11 was the highest I ever took in like the learning. In the like the uh, honeymoon period, which got yeah. what? You you <laughs> yeah, <laughs> did it. You did you did it? How many times? In so, one sitting? In one sitting, yeah, all at once. So this was like actually, I hope the statute of limitations doesn't apply yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, freedom yeah. of speech. Like this is literally <laughs> last year, like April, um, and I I lost my shit, dude. I mean, it was just wild. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> no, I would not encourage anyone to ever take like, why did you? Why did you do it? Why? Me and my buddy know. got drunk. <laughs> and we had, we bought so a drink drunk. like a week I and a half prior. Yeah, like, alcohol is like, yeah. that, I don't, that, that doesn't sound appealing to me. Already right. when I'm like sober, I'm like, nah, I'm not really feeling So how do you feel about psychedelics and smoking weed at the same time? Because I feel like I cannot take what? psychedelics without smoking weed. Oh, like, yeah. I have to smoke. Like, it's yeah. So, yeah, I like, I mean, I And I that's kind of like the negative part of it. I used to almost you romanticize the, um, the, like, event of smoking after easing yourself into a trip. It's just like, all right, cool, yeah, we're here, like, let's, let's roll up and do a set. Also, rolling while <laughs> tripping. Well, I can't, when I first started, I couldn't do it. You'd be in a conversation with somebody. Oh, oh your pupils are so dilated, you're fucking not even knowing how close your hands are. Not even that, shit. that low key. I would be so zoomed in because when I roll it's intense, like it's intimate and passionate with me. You feel me? I'm talking to it. But other people will always be talking to you while you roll. So yeah. you're sitting there having a keep up with the conversation while keeping having to look down at the blunt and then keep looking back up. You're trying to roll it, it's not working, everything's sticking. Everything's yeah. sticking. Everything's melding together. The background, like that's not in focus, the desk or whatever you're looking at is starting to bend around your hand. So I I'll, I'll always pass that responsibility on to someone else. Hey, yo, here, I can't do it. <laughs> my fingers get sweaty and I start having like more weed on my fingers than in the Yeah, we're starting to spill it out. <laughs> yep. It's just like, why L after I, L. I always attempt yep. it though. And knowing I'm gonna sit there and be like, all right, yeah, I need you to roll this for me. I'll be like, nah, maybe this will be different. This is <laughs> not this time, you know? This is oh, the time. God, this is the time I do it. I eventually got really good at it. But I don't actually, so, okay, for starters, I don't really trip anymore. If I do, it's just kind of like, I was somewhere where it was happening and everybody else was gonna trip. It's not like a bridge thing, you know, mm -hmm. but like, it's just, I'm past that point in my life. But say we're all staying up till 3 a.m. kind of thing, it's like, all right, screw it, yeah, I'll pop out a journal and just, we'll, you know, vibe it. 
Uh, so, I, but generally speaking, I don't seek it out. I don't do solo trips anymore, anything like that. Um, but about the weed thing, I don't. <laughs> I so I do smoke still, mostly uh, like a like a CBD uh, THC blend. So it's pretty mild, all things considered. But I do not. If I'm gonna trip, I don't smoke anymore while I trip because I feel like my <laughs> body is going to explode. Like I literally feel. Like, my blood pressure is soaring, even though it's not, because I've checked it. Uh, but yeah, I get this feeling in my fingers, especially if I'm drawing, because I'm, like, putting pressure on the tips. Oh, oh so you get tight. I know I what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about, yeah, because when you smoke, like, especially if you start coughing or whatever, it's, that has yep. sent me down a spiral while tripping, because I, I can feel my body, like, wanting to tense up. And then by the time, by the time I realize that I'm not trying to tense up anymore, I can still feel my body tensed up because like, I was I was coughing and I I'm tripping so I don't really have the complete control. Of acid is so weird, bro. Every time I take or I've only taken acid twice, but the two times that I did take it, I've always been like, why the fuck did I take this shit? <laughs> yeah. And then at the end of it, I'm like, yeah, that's why I took that shit. Yeah. Like, okay, that makes sense. I used to feel that way because I would take it with people who didn't want to do anything, mm -hmm. and so it would just be one you blow down a quarter. Of weed, man. <laughs> and barely feel it. And barely feel and it. And barely feel it. This is just throwing them back. I see how people get fucked up and black out drunk at parties and I just throw them back. Because oh, if, if I was sober, I wouldn't, yeah, be yeah. Able, I wouldn't be able to smoke that much weed in one sitting. <laughs> and still be able to talk to you, conversate. Like, when right. you're tripping, I don't cough. Damn. I don't. You're saying, if I cough? I call it like a lung up. Yeah. So now for me, I, I always look for what I'm gonna get out of the trip whenever I take one. Do you guys look at it like that as well, or do you just kind of go test. into it? I have a test for what I'm tripping, so I just like use my hand, and if the after images aren't, <laughs> you know, aren't tripping, oh, the tripping out is intense. I'm like, all right, so this is. Hey, this if y'all want to know how to test yourselves, <laughs> fucking wave your hand back and forth like I'm this. I'm telling you, though, there's been so many times where I've been out, and I was just like, yo, what the. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, that's the real, <laughs> uh, that's the real test. Funny. No, I, I'd say, so like in the beginning, probably the first five, ten trips, I would theme them. I'd be like, this one's about patience. This one's about responsibility. This one's about organization. Hell yeah. And some of that stuff, honestly, was probably super beneficial and positive overall because, like, I mean, I could tell you probably 99% with accuracy of what's in my backpack right now. Like, I, I try to keep record of stuff now, and a lot a lot of that was, like, mentioned in school, but then just hit home, you know, all, all bases, home run, on acid, because it's just, like, you don't want to be anywhere. Some of it's, like, fear of screwing up, mm -hmm. and other parts of it is just, like, you recognize that this is probably beneficial for the future, too. But you don't want to go anywhere. It's because it's your mind. Have something. And that's kind of why I was, that's why I did a lot of research on just drugs in general before I like started, because I knew it was going to be. Right. right. Well, speaking of tripping, you got some huge ass fucking pupils, pupils nigga. God damn it. Really? Yes. But there to be all this life. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, it's your mind. And that's the one thing, I think that's the fear. That people, that's the unspoken fear that people don't like to talk about when you're yeah. tripping or when you know people who trip. And it's the fact that you can very easily lose yourself. Lose yourself, yourself very lose easily. Like that, because you don't know what the fuck you're taking, number one. Mm -hmm. Especially with acid. Like, that's some government name shit. I look, that's why I don't really <laughs> fuck with it, because they really? really made it in the lab. You feel me? Sure, I can get behind. I mean, the Swedish government, if anything. Hey, man, the government's the government. <laughs> but, but the Swedish government's better. Nah, that's for <laughs> <laughs> all the shady. All the shady. <laughs> all the shady city. That is a fact. Can't get behind it. That is a major fact. But I'm glad that you look at it like that, man. That you look at it, okay, I'm going to go for patience this time. I'm going to go for this this time. That's a really, that's really good way to look at it, yeah. Um, for me, I every time that I've taken acid, the way that I've looked at it was I felt like I was hitting a reset button. Because all the shit that I do, like as far as like smoking weed and drinking and all the shit that I do, I feel like it kind of, it kind of clutters your mind a little bit. And after I take, and I'm not gonna lie, before I take shrooms, I know I'm about to take it, so I'll probably stop smoking weed a couple of days and then take the shrooms. And while I'm on shrooms, obviously I want to smoke weed, but afterwards I don't have the same 
want to smoke weed because I've just gotten exactly because I've just gotten fucked up off shrooms and I'm like let me just leave that shit alone so how do you feel about people that could be addicted to things that started acid to get them off of things because I've heard that acid can help with addictions oh like a palate cleanser mm-hmm. type of thing. right like uh, so supposedly the the 12 step program was secretly a 13 step program originally and the guy would the 13th step was acid to kind wow. of like seal all of these practices mm-hmm. into play wow i didn't never knew that shit um yeah whether that's myth or fact i couldn't tell you but that's just what i've heard mm-hmm. um i i don't know i mean i i definitely regard it as a medicine me personally i i know that like you're not supposed to be able to get addicted to acid, and I definitely yeah. didn't get addicted to it. But you can you can create a yeah, lifestyle depends. around it quickly. You uh, see it with people. I can smoke like weed. never even think of getting addicted to acid because it's so crazy. But I, like after you take acid, you don't want to take that shit again the next yeah, day. I know people who do. That's the thing. Some people love that. Thing. They do. Low key sitting in that like dark feeling of acid, like when you get to like the point of a bad trip, mm-hmm. like. I'm the type of person that I kind of like that shit. You feel me? Some people can't handle it. Some people don't like that. So the trip starts getting bad. They don't, you know what I'm saying? They, it, they take it harder instead of trying to lean into it. Some people, when they come out of a trip, they're like, all right, yo, let's take another sheet. Another yeah. sheet like that. Yeah. I, Just to push the boundaries. I, uh, and you can't take acid back to back. Okay. You, physi- you can't. It's, it will not you happen physically, you. Like, It won't, but it'll still like be in your system and be right. fucking you up. And you, you can still get peripheral effects even if like the main uh, like the main recreational effects aren't there. But yeah, two two weeks, right? Two weeks tolerance mm-hmm. reset. Mm-hmm. Um, I, used, I used to try to space it out a bit more just because my mind is one of my most valuable of things. Course. Like, people just always told me that like younger than being smart. And so that was kind of, I don't know why I thought acid was better than weed at the time, but it was just like, hey, I would much rather do this than this. But the one caveat, you might go insane afterwards. Might. You may not be the same person in the most dire sense of the phrase. I'm pretty proud of the fact that I'm still, like, cooking, you know. I haven't even talked to, like, about bananas or anything whack like that yet. Cool. And, like, I'm not going to talk about bananas. I'm, oh. just, I'm just saying, like, I haven't lost my mind. I've done uh, just an absolute crap load that is cool. of acid. Yeah. Um, so you that's, you know, thank you for like, flips or... Jedi, uh, Jedi flipped once with a small, small amount of MDMA. Well, wow, I don't know. What's that? So the flipping is when you have two different drugs. So LSD and shrooms. Molly drug use. Wow. LSD and Molly, shrooms yeah. and Molly. Technically, weed and uh, LSD is something. Jedi flip. Okay. Yeah, Jedi flip is supposed to be those three hippie flipping supposed to. Well, depending on who you ask, it's mushroom and Molly. I believe it's acid and Molly. Uh, there's a couple other ones. I mean, there's like, oh, Nexus flipping is supposed to be combining two CB and acid. Like, you, know I mean? you get a drug that promotes creativity, and then a culture around poly drug use, and you're gonna have like names. Right. Like, Not, this isn't exactly the same thing, but you you mix like your CBD with your with your weed yeah. too. But what's the, what's the point of that? Why do you do that? So, uh, <laughs> so like. Part, also part of the reason that I stopped doing acid and also stopped just smoking straight up weed was that my <laughs> yeah weed is too strong like we have bred almost all the CBD out of this shit and it is meant to be there and it's there for a reason all of these other uh, cannabinoids cause this uh, what are they called entourage effect mm-hmm. so like CBD CBN uh, CB or CBB and I mean like there's literally like a hundred and something of them in super small amounts in regular weed and hemp well I freaking get panic attacks if I smoke wow. your regular old marijuana from Colorado California yeah. whatever <laughs> yeah. like I get like I smoke that chronic I get chronic anxiety chronic it's anxiety just ridiculous that's why they call it that <laughs> <laughs> so well, damn I fucking hate yeah. that for you bro that's me so too because I used to smoke a lot and never get it that might have been what did it to you though I, yeah I, I smoked like too much shock effect yeah and it's like yeah it's like shock it's like a forced allergy kind of mm-hmm. thing but but if I combine it like I you know I went to uh, Salt Lake City well, did you ever month, take dabs ago. did you take dabs yeah I used to dab all the time that's <laughs> probably what it was yeah I started with I dabs. used to uh, distribute Ah, see, okay. So I, <laughs> that's how I was part of that supply line. That's how it kind of 
Okay. <laughs> very nice. But there are other reasons that we get along very well. Hey, okay. Yeah. See how it worked out. See how it turned out. Nice. Now, look at it. We worked on a whole book together. You just don't even know that. Yeah, that's true. I there keep, you go. I've been keeping that under wraps, but... And the sneeze cover. Yeah. The sneeze? I didn't know you did the sneeze he cover. Did, he did the sneeze cover. Oh, shit. Cover. Nice, bro. Turned it into merch. That shit was nice, bro. Yeah. Thank you. That gives you a good idea of, like, what the style is. Right. Like. It's like super flowy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I, I remember he he uh, he mentioned, like, something about, like, Subwave. Uh, yeah, so that's Subwave, so like, art. He gave yeah. me his IG, and his IG is the same handle. I'll let you go into this, but, like, I saw it and was like, whoa. I started scrolling through all of his art because he has it on his Instagram. Right. And so after that, I was like, yo, we have to, we, I have so many creative ideas to like put your style into like great use. Mm -hmm. You feel me? And so one of the things was album, album cover, album art turned into merch. And I knew it was going to be a great, it made a great shirt design. Most of the stuff he makes anyway. So. Yeah, that's what I kind of wanted to get into, man, because I saw that one like little uh, drawing that you did there, I guess, before we started the pod. Um, and it looked like it would go perfect on a t-shirt, like oh, an Obey nice. t-shirt or some shit like that. Yeah, thank you. But do you feel like you, you like, because you said that you started kind of like in graphic design, like with your dad and everything like that. Do you feel like that's something that you want to, uh, um, yeah, like pursue? To? Um, or, yeah, kind of. So, I mean, I... What's your ultimate goal? I don't know, man, dude. Just literally, if I don't draw, if I don't make music... If I don't make like goofy ass videos, then I just don't feel very fulfilled. And mm -hmm. so it's like a little bit of productivity, a little bit of just uh, expression, um, and and mostly just having fun and like feeling like when I put my head to the pillow each night, I want to be like, oh yeah, that that's what I did. Like what did I do today? I watched eight eight episodes of whatever. If you like, what happened? Those well, I don't even know. I could I can tell you what happened on the last episode. But I can't tell you what happened on the first. You're like, no, I, I drew that. You're like, what did I draw? I kind of forgot. You go back and look at it, you're like, oh, yeah. And if you, so my stuff is like super ADHD. And so I'll for, I like forget a lot of the stuff that's in it. And I go back to look. And I'll, oh, that's right. I put a little llama in there or whatever. <laughs> nice. Well, this, this barber that I just had a couple days ago was the very first time I had him as a barber. Mm -hmm. He asked me a question that I've never been asked before. It was like, man, what's your why? So... I think that's a really deep ass question, bro. Yeah. So what 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 do you feel like your why is? Like why do you do everything that you do? Um man, to be honest, I am I just I love the Lord and I wanna be around as long as uh as he wants me to be. Of course. And so while I'm here, I just I'm gonna just do things. I'm gonna make my imprint and record, archive as much as I can. Um if it helps people out, cool. If it you know, make somebody smile or whatever, awesome. Like, that's, I can pass knowing that mm -hmm. somebody got something out of it. And I've already, I've already gotten there, so I'm content. I'm just doing it now just for the heck of it. No, of course. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. And, and on the graphic design question, too, I don't know if I want to necessarily do, like, t-shirts, t-shirt designs or anything. Or but, fashion design, any type of thing. Yeah, yeah. But, like, logo creation, I would, I'd love to design a logo for somebody. I feel like some of this stuff is a little too busy. For like way too busy for logos, but I also like I learned a lot about some of these patterns and shapes that I could just put something really simple down. Mm -hmm. um, actually, I do that a lot. Just design logos just for fake companies. Oh, I was about to ask like who do you design logos for? Yeah, just like companies I come up with, and usually they're jokes. They're like dad jokes or something that the uh, company is. You should start doing that with startups though. Like reaching out, like, hey, that's fair. Here's some yeah. logos. Try to get attached to some project. Go on Kickstarter, just start scrolling. Hell yeah, <laughs> for real. No, serious. <clears throat> but um, um, what's uh, talk more about Subwave art? Because I remember when we met this uh, skate park. That was the first time you ever. It's like explained it. Yeah, yeah. All right. So yeah. Uh, so before, like you know how like artists use monikers. It's like an age old thing. Mm -hmm. um, so I, you know, I wanted to have a moniker, and this is kind of like during the time that I was doing a lot of drugs, and so I was living a sort of a split life, like a lot of people in my life didn't know that I was in any way, shape, or form connected to any of the drug scene, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, that's, that's unfortunate, but I, I kind of wanted to make artwork that was influenced by said drugs that I was using at the time, yeah. and uh, I needed a name for that specific persona, kind of like a Slim Shady to Eminem sort mm -hmm. of thing, and 
Um, and so I, my, my Slim Shady was Subway Bart. And pretty much the breakdown of like the naming was, what's up? I dead ass took, sorry Allison Willett, this is, that was my old boss. I uh, took two tabs of acid and then went to work. And then <laughs> was like counting seeds for UT, right? And she comes upstairs, and by the way, I, I don't know what it is, but one, two, three, four tabs roughly, I stay like super able to do anything. I used to skate off of four tabs like yeah. all the time. Skating on tripping is pretty cool. It's amazing. You get a different feel for your body in my opinion. Definitely. It's like extremely more in, in detail and uh, like fine tuned. Like, all of your movements are fine tuned. But I so I went in on two tabs, which is enough to get me geeking if I'm like talking to somebody. But but fine if I'm just wanting to like listen to music and do the same task over and over again. So I'm counting these seeds, and I start to just get this gnarly headache. And so uh, Allison, my old boss, comes upstairs. She's like, how's it going? And I was like, hey, like, it's going all right. But this is happening. I did not. So she knew that like, I smoked weed and came to work. She did not know I was tripping. <laughs> so um, I don't condone this in any, by any means. Of course, don't, don't do drugs. Kid. Please yeah. don't. <laughs> Especially not acid and going to work. That's, yeah. I couldn't yeah. imagine. That's, that's a waste of drug, bro. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. And so like, I got this headache, and I was like, yo, Alice, I'm going to have to leave. Like, I'm going to do the next 30 minutes, and I'm going to go. She was like, OK, like whatever. So so that's what I did. And anyways, I like pull up to uh, my buddy's place. We were always hanging out, smoking, playing Forza, and that sort of thing. And I sat, nobody was home yet. So I used to just like roll up to their uh, spot and not text anybody. I don't know why I did that. But I just like, I don't know, it felt like Friends, the the, um, the show. The show. You know, where people are just always at somebody else's place. And so I never texted them. Well, so I'm sitting out there. I text somebody. He's like, I'm on my way back. So I got like 20 minutes to kill. And I'm sitting and I'm drawing. And I'm thinking, I need a name for this whole art thing. And... I was like, well, okay, well, so let's let's figure out. Like, it's gonna have to have some meaning. It can't just be something wacky and random. Um, so I was like, well, I'm kind of. I feel like sort of tripping, and sometimes even smoking weed, but mostly tripping. It's kind of like you're easing yourself into a pool, or you're standing in low tide, and then like the uh, the water's coming up around you. So mm -hmm. it's a sub wave. Mm -hmm. Once you're under the water, okay, you're seeing underwater. You're like, oh, wait, we're here. We're here, this is cool, let's swim around, let's explore. Mm. Uh, but up until that point, it's just like, oh, this is kind of uncomfortable, <laughs> this is a little weird, like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> uh, you know, that sort of thing. And what the fuck is that? <laughs> that's a really yeah, good exactly. explanation. Hell yeah. I just touched my leg, someone touched my leg. Um, but yeah, that's subway art. It's just under uh, under the waves kind of art, influenced by the pressure of the ocean. Hell yeah, man. Very nice. We're gonna take a break real quick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> We good? Are we, count, count me in. Count me in. And one. It's totally gone. You're, you're ready to start whenever you want. Alright. How many people are on this earth, man? Uh, almost 8 billion. 8 billion. Oh, it's like 7.9 now, I think, or something like that. Wow. That is, is wild. It? Dude. Damn, it was like 7.8, like what was last year. Yeah. 2052, it'll be 10 billion, and we'll really see some shit then. Nah, but population control is about to start. Y'all about to when? start. You think so? Y'all about to Do start. What? When? 2052, it'll be 10 billion people, and we're gonna really see some shit then. I think that's the end of the world, it's 2052. That's not lucky. That's literally my lucky number, bro. I, no way. I told myself that I was probably gonna die at that time. What? Wow. Yeah, that's, well, that's, that's probably young. That's super young, bro. You're it's fucked it. up for that. I mean, not really. <laughs> that is super young. That's 54 years old. Like, you born in 98? 52 and 99. But either way, that's young. That's longer than like where I thought I was going So many cards are in my head, like most people. Yeah, I thought I was going to die by 25. I'm 23, so I'm what? pretty good. <laughs> yeah, what, what like, they call it fucked up. That's, <laughs> what that's real fucked up when we talking about which age we felt like we were going to die. And what, what age did you feel like, man? <laughs> no, I, well, I, I, I had, feel so, like I had so, <laughs> uh, depressing attitudes as a youth. So, as a youth. <laughs> as a youth, so I thought I was going to die pretty young. Well, I'm glad that wasn't the case. Yeah, I'm a pretty great dude. I, I'm still don't, pretty young. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, man. I just, I don't know. The way I look at it is, is I look at other people and, like, what age that they are, which is bad. Like, go look at my dad. My dad, he's 50 years old. 
You know what I'm saying? Every time you told me, I'm like, nah, right. this is cat. Exactly. My dad's 50 years old, does not look at it in the slightest. Same with The Rock Johnson. Yeah, I know The Rock Johnson is a fucking... Yeah. That that's a whole other bro. Yeah, bro. <laughs> but at the same know. time, this nigga's 50 years old, bro. Look how good he looks. Like, goddamn. He's the one case that makes me think, all right, you do when you go Hollywood. They give you a, yes. a serum. The you know? serum? <laughs> the serum. <laughs> Shit, <man. laughs> The baby genetics or whatever the fuck. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Conspiracy uh, out. What's that? What's that crap? Uh, it was in uh, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. It was like the most. Oh, what is like chroma? Chroma something? No, it was like chroma. Oh man, what? I'm not gonna remember. What? <laughs> it's, it's chroma something, but like supposedly everybody in Hollywood, everybody who's in like the big time politics, like any puppet master of of just globally right now is is taking this stuff. Chroma. Oh man. If I remember it, I'll just blur it out. Hell yeah. But I can't remember right now. How's the drawing coming? Dude, it's good. I'm gonna incorporate some uh, recognizable things here, right? In locomotives. I've got a local hoodie so far, but. Hey, shout out to the crew. That's us. Shout out, shout out, shout out. Now, before the break, you explained to us where you got subwave art from. And I yeah. remember when we met at the skate park, you were telling me about the different. Kind of how you can already tell us about the different personas yeah. when it comes to you expressing yourself. And then the music one, uh, how do you say it? Is it Mindeltide? Mindeltide. Mindeltide. Uh, Mindeltide is cool too. So um, I always read it like Mind the Tide. Yeah. Like yeah. Mind L E. Yeah, because you know. But like, like whenever it's like pronounced, I think it's easiest to spell it when I say Mindeltide. Maybe. Maybe it's not. Maybe Mindeltide is, is better. No, I, but I never say it like mind the tide. Oh, my head is still mind the tide. Right. Just me automatically translating that L E. Because it's right. it's like when you say la la casa, you feel me? It's the house. Or like French, like lay. So I right. in my head is always instead of mind the tide, it's mind the tide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which mm-hmm. is so great because when I listen to your music, it's then like, oh, dude, this is this fits the <laughs> type of music I'm listening to. Heck yeah. But where'd you how'd you come up with that? Yeah. So um. So it's the same like same thing with subway art. Like I wanted to be able to have um, a moniker that was specific to uh, a certain art form, which was in this case music. And I wanted to do the same thing uh, as far as like be a place where I could get essentially screwed up in the head and then just make some music. And uh, granted, my earliest stuff it was just like super horrible, and uh, you know like. Didn't even know what mixing was, hadn't even heard before the mix. Yeah, pre mix and then already posted, like, did not have a clue how to do any sort of sequencing or arrangement or whatever. Pretty much me just playing with echo and reverb yeah. effects and, like, yelling into the mic. Uh, that stuff I never labeled as that producer because it was kind of just a learning curve. But so my- you were aware, like, of. Uh- was it a quality thing, or was it, Definitely. this isn't what I want to put out stuff on here? Yeah, I was putting it out there to record it, just to, like, so that I could come back to it and see, like, okay, yeah, this is, like, humble beginnings, this is how crappy it was to begin with, because I had no clue. But I was just teaching myself the doll. So that was part. But teaching yourself the what? The doll, the digital audio workspace. So yeah. that's what Audacity, FL Studio. Okay. Yeah. All that stuff. Which I use Logic, because I'm just... I'm not a Mac fanboy, but or an Apple fanboy, or whatever. But I just really love the stability of like Mac OS. Mm-hmm. I dig it. Uh, but mental tie. <laughs> what is what is what is what is keep going? Just yeah, yeah. Mental tie though. So like mind lay tie, like watch the tide, which is something that um, I'm not a surfer per se, but it's something that I would imagine or maybe I have heard surfers say before, where it's just like. Hey, like keep in mind that the tide is like such and such PM or what. Where are you from? Are you from anywhere this has? No, so, uh, I'm I'm from Cleveland, Tennessee. Like, wow. Born and raised, <laughs> lived in Knoxville for about two, three years. Yeah. I've I've surfed once and surfed horribly. My current longboard setup is like built to feel like surfing on asphalt. Wow. And uh, and that's in preparation because I want to go back and actually be prepared to surf properly. Wow. Okay. Well, why do you like longboarding? I, I, I mean, for years, I, I've, I've gotten on everybody's ass at longboards, and that doesn't have a, a coochie in between their legs. But that's not the point that I'm trying to make. The point that I'm trying to make is, why do you feel like, why, why do you longboard instead of skateboard? 
Dude, and I ask the same thing to my homeboy Carlos, because I really don't understand. You homeboy? You don't skate? I used to. He used to, but he pussed out, bro. He started, <laughs> he started doing the longboarding thing, and he was like, this is me. He was things. like, this is my life now. This is my life now. So, like, so what, what made you change over to this lifestyle? Yeah, so, okay, so, like, back whenever uh, I was a freshman in college, I was dating this girl. And uh, it all starts with a girl. Yeah. yeah. Ruined it all. And I never, I never considered myself a skater in any sense. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I tried to skate maybe five years prior and was just like, mm -hmm. not, not happening. Ripstick, maybe. Bike, yes, all day long. What? You would, you would much rather use a ripstick than a regular skateboard. Well, not anymore. Ripsticks are fire. No, uh, ripsticks are fire. I, I get it. I get I it. it. Much they are hard. But at the same time, like, opposed to, like, a longboard in a skateboard. If you didn't have to constantly do this with your legs back and forth. Like, <laughs> that shit is a lot of work, nigga. <laughs> it's if a lot of work. If you didn't have to do that, it'd be a great invention. But I used to use it like a, like a workout. Like, I, I had ripstick before I did anything else. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, throw the ripstick away, like, back wheel's done. All right, gotta get a new wheel. Can't drive yet, so let's just move on to something else. And, um, and yeah, you know, fast forward, like, three four years. I'm with this girl, she's like, hey, I'm gonna go longboarding. Like, you know how to longboard? Like, no, never done it. Wow. So I really so don't get why it was so hard for niggas to rip stick. Like, I don't get that shit at all. Yeah. <laughs> like, people made it look like it was so hard to rip stick, but it was so easy oh, at the yeah. same time. You had to walk forward alternative. It was right. kind of like, kind of like you were trying to jiggle your Exactly. <laughs> You know? Jiggle yourself forward, that's all. Yeah. yeah. But anywho, go ahead, I'm sorry. Man. No, I just, I just say that because that shit used to piss me off. Nah, this man will show up to, when he asked me to skate, and when I saw him with a longboard, <laughs> I was so confused. Like, <laughs> hey, yo, I, didn't say, have my, I didn't have my contacts in. So I was like, that's not a CJ. It was only that's two other CJ. people. There were only two other people at the park when I showed up. Mom and in the hill, the longboard. It was noticeably not a CJ, so I was like, that can't be CJ. I'm gonna look at my phone and see if he's like probably in the parking lot. Hell yeah. Way. And then I'm walking up and then skating up and I see him and then start to realize, oh no, that's CJ with the longboard. So my first question would be, hey, how's it going? What the fuck is this longboard doing here at the skate park? What are you about to do with this? Because it's like, it's like Tyson, you know? So it's like with the bowls and all that. Um, so you can skate a bowl on a, on a longboard. Yeah. That's what I was about to say. So you be dropping in on a fucking bowl. No, I, I was about to say. I'm like, oh, bro, because he told me this. Yeah, I don't drop into, like, the really steep, like, 90 degree, 85, whatever degree okay. bowls. I drop into more, like, the, the smoother things. And also, like, with that surf skate setup on the front, it's snappy. So, like, I can, you know, it starts from your shoulders and goes down. So, like, you can whip your shoulders around and your feet follow, you know, hips and then feet. Um, and you can like get up on on an angle and then whip it back down and kind of like I mean there's curves and stuff too and like whipping around the curves feels like you're in a curl like I don't know it's, just, it's very surfy and so it's not like it's not flashy there's no it's all feeling it doesn't it probably doesn't look that impressive but it feels just amazing it looks super boxy that's the thing like you really? look like you're posing as a skater and then until you reach the next <laughs> I guess, uh, ramp or whatever you're going around. So that first part when you drop in Tyson, yeah. there's two ramps, and then you're going around. Yeah. Uh, it looks like you're suspended for a bit in that one pose. So that's it only looks weird if you switch to another one. And right. And you just, yeah. It looks kind of choppy altogether, but it, it's strange to see at the skate park, but it does look like you're having pretty much. Pretty good fun. <laughs> pretty good amount of fun. That's yeah, all that matters. Yeah. Compared to trying to hit tricks and shit like just on a regular board and seeing, right. seeing all the people with a regular skateboard out skate you, I was much more impressed with the fact that he was actually longboarding. Mm -hmm. Even after he told me, hey, this is what you can do with it, and then he said that he wasn't dropping in, I was like, man, what the fuck? Now, I will say this, longboards are fucking high, bro. Longboards, yeah, bro. Longboards yeah. are so high. It's a lot more wood. Yeah. Um, that's the main thing that I, I kind of respect longboard as far as that man whenever they get a longboard it's a real investment bro because i used to sell them hoes and bro getting them 400 dollar off like 420 something dollars sales off a of longboard Ooh. them shit used to be nice could not catch me paying that much. nice but i mean you, you know you know what a land yacht is you ever land yacht land yacht longboards that you you a land yacht <laughs> but bro those are like top of the line bro them shit is expensive or a longer 
Hell yeah, hell yeah, bro. And yeah. I think they make some of them with like bamboo instead of wood, mm-hmm. so that like it fucking mm-hmm. like curves. Oh, so like I think bamboo skate. Like I'm the type of person like I. Don't, it's not the amount that I pay on my skateboard, but I'm not the type of person where like I can tell you the different types of skateboards, and I'm a regular skater. Mm-hmm. At this point, you feel me? It's never been about the board. The only time I've ever cared about the skateboard brand was the board. Was when people would come up to me wow. and tell me that I had a gold board. Because they would know. And that's a fat ass L. That's a fat L. Mm-hmm. Having a gold board. Somebody just gave it to me. It wasn't like I went out and like, was, hey, give me the globes. Give me them globes. I'm, 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 I'm a globe type of guy. I'm a globe type of guy. I feel that. <laughs> I'm a globe type of guy. This nigga here. Nah, globes are great, but they're just, they're just kind of. Uh, they're gold. heavy. Yeah, bro. Uh, same with, um, I forget what they're birdhouse. called. Uh, huh? Birdhouse. Birdhouse. No, yeah. birdhouse. Birdhouse. Birdhouse! That's exactly what it is. Yeah. Birdhouse fucking skateboards, they're like, they're n- not like great skateboards, um, but, but they're they're decent though. And they're, you'll find them always in like skate shops and shit like that, but they're low-key on the lower end of the, of the spectrum. Well, um, now that they're like not being pro- or they're not being made though they're like rare as hell really like, you can pay a lot for the untitled birdhouse mm-hmm. uh, you like a stack for it oh for real yeah damn i used to not pay attention to this is when i started paying attention to skateboard brands because there were just too many brands to keep up with in the first place so i was i just avoided that in life but it became skating after i showed up with a skateboard that i definitely got from walmart to school and then the kid this kid named Daly, I was a little school. He got on your ass. He didn't get on me, but he was like he said something and he was like with that Walmart Walmart board. It's so strange. And I was like, damn It's so strange. Tell. It's so strange this whole thing because they know. But look though, it skated perfectly and the board was brand new. It was great. I put some different ones wow. on and customized it. So the fact that he was coming at it, like you say, he knew that it was a fucking Walmart board. Walmart like, like, yeah. board. Yeah. But, like, yeah. but like really though, so like a skate deck, right? Like mm-hmm. a skateboard deck. It is not nearly as picky as with a longboard deck. You've got a very basic shape. You've got the size. Those are like, mm-hmm. you know, the size is the very yeah, thing. Yeah, true, yeah. And then you've got the trucks that you pick. That's mm-hmm. huge. You've got the bearings, which yeah. is generally going to be all the same if you're skating like park stuff. Unless you're like skating in wet areas. And, you... and then you want softer bearings? Or... Well, you just have to take an extra Or sorry, you know, push, pushing is what I meant. Oh, my bad, my bad. Yeah, bearings, yeah, just re- throw some reds on there and then call it, you know, get That's another. Great. Yeah, just they're cheap and just get another pack, get another, uh, like, four pack or eight pack or whatever. I don't always do this. They need long board bearings? <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, they got it. I mean, yeah, definitely. They're kind of like all the same thing. Mm-hmm. You can use skate bearings on long board wheels. Same size and everything? Yeah, same size. That's wild. Yeah. I, have to, I just bought some new wheels okay. to make a. Kind of long board hybrid, hybrid, like a cruiser yeah. skateboard. So I was yeah. curious about. Oh, what's cool. talking about that? Yeah, I didn't buy it. You ever, you ever seen Bronson, Bronson, uh, Bronson bearings before? Huh? No. They're really, really nice on long okay. boards. Yeah, looking at Bronson's, uh, they're kind of like ceramic. You ever heard of ceramic bearings before? Yes. They're damn near the same thing as ceramic bearings. Like they feel like ceramic bearings. Hell mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, the, the skate deck though, I mean, the skate decks are super stiff, and like longboard decks, you know, some of them come concave, some of them are, are a little more convex, some of them are uh, are a bit stiffer, and the other ones are just super spongy. Mm-hmm. Uh, usually, depending on the size, like you said, like the makeup, whether it's bamboo, maple, or some right. some other thing, carbon fiber, whatever. Um, carbon fiber. But like skate decks, if you got a good set of trucks and a good set of wheels. Mm-hmm. And like the bushings that came with those trucks, you're good to go. I think they're all pretty. Like all decks are just about the same because they're so breakable. Yeah, that's day. true. Can you do any tricks on your longboard? I used to, I could dance if I take my surf skates. Oh shit, out. bro! I ain't gonna cap. Promos are showing me like some dance like like videos of niggas like on. Yeah. Bro, they be getting that shit. Uh, it's it's made me try to They be getting that shit. I gave it to them a little bit, not a whole bit, but a little bit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that's the problem. I gave it to them a little bit. I was like, yeah, that shit kind of loud. You know, what I want to say it was like two years ago before the long, not, I guess not two years ago, depending on when the craze for longboard started. Yeah. This one Asian chick, I would just see her on my timeline all the time. 
getting down on fucking longboard. Right. Like just boogie down to different music. And of course people took the footage and put different music to it. Oh, no, she was getting down to some of the bassiest songs mm. I've ever heard on the longboard in different areas. Wasn't always the same video. Never found out who she was, but I'd love to have her on the pod. Man, I, I bet she makes music, bro. She probably does. Well, she yeah. seemed like a wavy person. Well, it would make more sense for her to then have her own music on it. It was always music I knew. Mm. <laughs> to go off that, man, do you feel like your art in general has any effect on the music that you've made in the past? Absolutely. I used to do exercises where I would like, uh, you know, sober higher and otherwise, I would sit down and listen to music and I would make Mm. Strokes based off the music. Based off the music, I feel that. Like for like a straight hour at a time, just different. And sometimes I, I mean, I've got uh, pieces in here that do the same, that, that, that like do this, but I'll weave in, like at the end of a song, like really spoke to me, that, that name of that song, and sometimes even the artist is going to be listed in that piece. Who are your artists that you like to listen to at oh, the next time? That's, so instrumentals mostly with like, feel that. with drawing, right? Uh, with skating, I guess you can get away with more like lyrical stuff because like you're you're focusing on the road, and of course not wrecking, not getting run over. But right. you also you can listen to lyrics. Mm -hmm. uh, but like whenever you're in your own head and you're drawing or whatever, I don't know. I mean, Goose Step, of course. Um, you know, some electronic stuff, kind of like uh, I just got recently introduced to Charles the First. I don't know if you know who that is. I don't. <laughs> First. <laughs> down, so down tempo stuff. Um, down tempo stuff is kind of just like my shit. I. Don't like it when my heart rate is above 130. <laughs> so I try to keep my BPM of the songs that I'm listening to below 130. Do you work out at all? Yeah, I mean, skate. I, I yeah, skate yeah, work out. And I don't have run on occasion, too. Um, and then, at, I mean, at Lowe's work in the Garden Center, I am lifting mulch, like, all the time. No less than 100 bags in a day. How long have you been working there? Uh, Four-ish months. It's been hot probably the whole time you've been working there. Yes, it? sir. No, no, no. In the beginning, was sort of everywhere. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. say you live an active lifestyle. I definitely. Definitely. Okay. Yeah, I'm constantly working. I didn't have my uh, license for like two and a half, three years. Like, I had to take it away. <laughs> so, I was... I, I hate it. <laughs> you don't have to go into this story. No, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, not going to go deep <laughs> into it. But just pretty much all you need to know is I didn't have access to drive myself anywhere for like three years. Um, and even if I had a car available to me, but I had no license. Mm -hmm. And that is the most frustrating thing. Don't ever get yourself in any sort of trouble where you don't have the ability to drive yourself because it'll piss you off. And you will, you'll end up walking everywhere or asking people for rides and you'll feel like crap. Or, yeah, or standing. And actually that's, honestly, that's like, the big draw to the longboard. You guys want a longboard? I used to bike everywhere and get flat tires and then walk myself yeah. with a flat tire to the rest of the location. Can't uh, you can't get a flat tire on a longboard. Very true. That is the fact. So, and yes. they have electric longboards now. They did when I started. I mean, they didn't have decent ones for this price. But yes, they totally do now. How do you guys feel about those? I, I won't, I, I, I've only seen those like little boards with the fucking oh, fast yeah. wheel. Yeah, I've only seen oh, that. Electric unicycle. <laughs> I haven't seen no electric longboard though. They don't call them what they are. They're unicycles with a motor. Yeah. Unicycles. <laughs> unicycles. Yeah, one looks pretty cool, but like e-skate, just in general, e-skate culture is picking up. I think it's, uh, it makes it more accessible for people who would consider themselves less than averagely, averagely? Athletic. Yeah. How often do you use them damn scooters downtown? Never. Never. I used to use them a lot when I first dropped. They're really fun. They're really fun. They're really actually. Fun. Actually, actually. <laughs> they're really fun. Before we go to start talking you know, shit it's about a, them. It's a, nice, it's, fun. it's a nice way to get from where you need to go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but no, the scooters are legit. Ain't her cheap, dog. This, they are cheap. Wait, it's great. I see the look in your eyes, whatever. I don't have any type of look in my eyes, cool bro. <laughs> I'm cool as hell. I'm cool with the scooters, bro. Hell. It, it says in the thing whenever you, like, you get the app and you're about to sign up or whatever, it's like, you must be this many years old to have a valid license. A valid license. Like, they don't even ask you for it. We can't your bar code. Okay. Right. Yeah, you don't have to scan that license. You don't have to have it on you. You just have to have been okay. driving something before. That's wow. It. I hate the apps, how many apps you have to get for it. Right. Well, well that's actually, that actually makes a little bit of sense. 
So, uh, which is crazy. Um, me and my family, we rent out like, like pontoons and like boats and shit, like all the time. And you don't necessarily have to have like a voting license. You just have to have a driver's license. You can get wherever the fuck you want. And for the whole entire day, and we've been doing that shit for so long, bro. But seeing the different, like say there's two boats in front of you. Mm -hmm. And you want to get, it doesn't matter you which one you get. But the one you choose, you don't have the app for it. And you gotta fucking download the app. And then the other one, you have the app for it. Wait, the app, why would you need need an app on the water? Well, I'm s- trying to relate it to the scooters. Okay. So, like, the scooters, and the oh, yes. everything's a metaphor. What the fuck? In order to unlock the scooters and use them, you have to use the app for that company. Right. Yeah. There's multiple companies with different scooters, so if you want to have availability to all scooters at any time, you got to have apps. Because one closes at, like, what? The bail rides used to close at, like, 9. Damn. The others used to close at close to 11 to 12. Was it Bird or something? Or? No, that's in Memphis or wherever, I think. Okay, they have them in D.C. too. They keep getting different... See, that's what I'm saying. They keep yeah. getting different names. Right. Because like like, I went to L.A., and that was the first time I had seen them, and they were birds. And then they brought them to Memphis, and then it was the same thing, birds. So apparently Atlanta already had the equivalent of one. The first time I saw it was actually at UT, like the campus. Mm-hmm. And then it wasn't until I left and actually heard people talking about the birds in Memphis when they got the spin and whatever the fuck they got in Knoxville. That's right, spin. I forgot what that was. They were saying, oh, it's like the birds in Right. Uh, uh, and I ain't gonna lie, whenever I rode the bird in Cali, it wasn't even a different point A to point B. It was just to ride that bitch. <laughs> Loki, bro, just to throw on some music and just go yeah. around the city. I think we were at Venice Beach and I had I was on a bird just kind of going down Venice Beach watching all the baddies you know, run oh, past me and shit. Yeah, bro, it was great, great little vibe. So you think yeah. you could pull a pull a baddie on a scooter? If you From a yeah, bro, like come skirt up on a ass. <laughs> you can skirt on a scooter. What's happening, Shotty? What's good? You wouldn't know. Turning a little too sharp and just falling right, right in front of her. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Those, Get back up, brush yeah. your shoulders off. Hey, what's going on? The rolling <laughs> wheels can be handled. <laughs> they <laughs> can not handle. Not at all, nigga. <laughs> not at all. They didn't get it. They didn't get enough speed for a drift, nigga. <laughs> Fifteen miles per hour. That's you. Sixteen if you're going down the hill. <laughs> yeah. Oh God, for real. Yeah. Man. Shop. How's your How's your homies coming? Dude, it's it's coming along. I'm putting down some uh, some platforms to hold these. Um, Spikes up. Yeah, it's, 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 I don't know. It's coming along, though. Yeah, I can kind of see it a little bit. It's, there's a glare from the lights. So I'm trying oh, to yeah. see people. No, 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 no. Okay. It's just him. Uh, the camera can't see. It's cool. All right. It's, it's just... Oh, I hear you. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, it's coming along, though. I'm just throwing stuff down. I'm trying to, like, build it out and keep a certain amount of movement and complexity without it being just, like... Dear God, what am I looking at? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I feel like that's that's hard to get around sometimes. Or I guess as the artist, whenever you're, I don't know if you plan out before or during your do year. Well, trying to keep yourself in check, I know that can be, you know, cumbersome as an artist with whatever you're creating. You know, trying to limit yourself but not limit yourself mm-hmm. too much. Yeah, I. It's easier to like get into flow whenever you're not talking to people. Like I, I enjoy drawing and talking at the same time, but it is just, uh, I mean, if you're not with anybody and you're just listening to your own music, or honestly even silence, just complete silence, and you just start going, it is so easy to just like have two, three hours, just go, and you've got a full page filled with ink. Um, that's that's fun, because then you're just like, I don't even remember starting hardly. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Music, you just almost get lost in it. Totally get lost in it. Mm-hmm. Music for me, I feel like dictates my moods. So I couldn't like. Yeah. If I were an artist, I feel like I wouldn't like draw while I'm listening to music, unless really? that was my sole purpose when I set out to draw. Well, you like kind of like uh, think of being an antenna, you know, and like you're like picking up mm-hmm. that signal, and then you are decoding it, and then re-encoding it after you've like processed what you're hearing. And then this is like essentially your signal, right? So it's not necessarily background music. It's 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 actual. Well, that's the thing. So I was dating this artist for like a couple months, and she told me something that kind of skewed how I approach music. Mm-hmm. Which is before it would be kind of try to find an inspiration from all of the music that I listen to, not just a specific genre, yeah. but 
it went from that to just finding out that she doesn't get inspiration from anything. She, in fact, she tries to avoid it at all costs, so she's authentically her at all times, which I thought was the coolest thing, and especially as a visual artist, for her to say that. Because if you're a visual artist, it's so... When you see something visually, that's every day in your life that you can be influenced by. And especially yeah. when it comes to art, you could see a painting in a fucking store that they bought and be inspired by it. So for you to try to cling to your own uniqueness, do you ever try to do that? Like, that's uh, what I brought up music, because I can not do, do it. Like, um, just like the concept of recursion, like something that never gets an outside influence, but constantly just repeats upon itself. Um, yeah, I mean, I do, I do that sometimes. Uh, every now and then, it's, like, I've got pieces in here that literally say, uh, triangles go. And it's just me, and that's literally me sitting down and going, what should I draw? Triangles, go. And I write a note for myself so that my ADHD ass doesn't forget what I'm doing. Yeah. And, uh, and it's just a bunch of triangles. What's but your favorite shape? Probably triangles. Triangle, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What about you? What's your favorite shape? Man, I... I like a rhombus, nigga. A rhombus? A rhombus, nigga. Yeah. Them hoes are lit. Man, that was me probably early, probably eighth grade. And then it changed. It changed to, it went from the diamond to the rhombus to the parallel. Whenever the whole, ju remember the juice fade? You might not, you, them niggas might not have been doing the juice fade where you from. Anywho, there's a thing called a juice fade, okay? Juice fade. And the juice fade is based off the movie Juice. Right, so you know how he had the little the little curve in his head. He had a little Tupac. yeah. Tupac had a little curve, a little yes. yeah. So that's called a juice, right? Mm -hmm. So anytime you get a curve in your head, you get in the juice. I thought it was a part. A part was, would go straight, like uh, straight, okay. yeah. But since it's a but curve, the juice is a type of part. Yeah, it's a, right. it's a juice, but it's based upon the movie, right? Mm -hmm. So niggas, they would get the high tops, but they would get it juice. So half of the high top will be lower than the other half. Yeah. You remember that? Yeah. Yeah. that and it'd be like a little, yeah, a little yeah, juice. Yeah, and bro, and like that. bro, I used to love that shit because it would remind me of the rhombus so much, <laughs> man. <laughs> so you were like, you're looking at niggas like, damn, I like that I shit. Like that I shit. like that <laughs> shit. I like that shit. Yeah, that's weird, nigga. That's funny. <laughs> bro, because it would look so cool because one side of it would be low and then the other side would be high as hell. I that was probably the hardest haircut that was a trend in middle school. It looks like a mountain range. I know what you're talking about. Right. Right. I remember seeing the person I saw with it and was thinking, oh, yeah, that's, that's pretty neat. The juice. Before, it used to always just be the high top. The that's high top. it. So seeing that, I didn't know that was called a juice. Yes. Yes. Hell the yeah. The juice. <laughs> you had to have the juice to have it. Got like, the juice. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like if I was the barber giving out juice fades, like that, that would be my specialty. Yeah, man, it's got the juice. juice now, nigga. <laughs> y'all know, y'all know what the niggas do in Houston, how they have the little patch of hair in the back of their head? Uh, you ever seen funny. that? Is that, is that intentional? No, no, like they'll have like a whole afro on the down part of their head. Oh, like, yeah, all their I've hair will be glow and then no, no, no. afro. No, I've seen niggas who were bald and then they still have that same. Just patch. a little patch. Yeah, you that ever is, seen that before? That's a real shit. Cut that shit, shit. off. <laughs> <laughs> that off. Get that shit off. Get that shit off. Get that shit off. Get You missed the spot. G. Go, go back. <laughs> okay, G, I'm sorry. We got a bit off topic. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you said, uh, the reason I brought up inspirations is because one of the things that, one of the reasons I even hit you up when I did about the collaboration for the book yeah. was because it is, I wrote a poem at one point to one of your paintings. And no I was, way. Yeah, I did that before I actually I like, asked that. you about that. Because I wanted to see if one, I could evoke those same emotions. Because I, the, the, the topics I talk about and cover in my poetry, it isn't necessary. It doesn't come from that same kind of subwave uh, mindset, but it yeah. does end up eventually putting you under under a curtain of emotion, which essentially is the wave yeah. in your subwave metaphor, like the yeah, wave. It, it's just like a different type of pool. Right? And the fact that I already liked your art, it was just one of those things where I, it was a test run. So before I even hit you up, I did all that. And then when I finally did, the fact that you agreed, it was one of those things where I didn't know how I was going, if I could even, not necessarily 
portray those emotions, I definitely didn't want to mimic any feelings because that would be kind of false. Right. And I wanted the artwork to one be representative of of a poem or vice versa, which we ended up doing in the process. Did, did you yeah. already know like the the, the name of Steez like or Sneeze? I'm Steez. The fuck am I talking about? <laughs> Sneeze. <laughs> uh, <laughs> before you made the art, or did you all did or was that yeah. something that happened afterwards? Uh, he sent me. The mix. Was it, that was the final mix, right? It's radio edit. Yeah, I did since you I sent you the radio edit. Right. So it was fine. And, and something else too, which I listened to by the way. It was like two other tracks. Oh yeah, so the EP that the sneeze uh so originally sneeze was just one song and then we made the radio edit version and extended it and then put that out as a re-release single. Nice. But that was also because we were putting out an, I was putting out my own second EP that had the sequel if you will. To okay. The sneeze song. Okay, so if you guys not aren't understanding what we're talking about right now, so Sneeze is actually a, a song off of my man's album, Colors. Y'all go check that shit out on Apple Music. You know what I'm saying? A little plug right there. Just a little, little plug. But, but yeah, man, that Sneeze song was probably one of my favorite songs on that album. Yeah, for Thank sure. Hell yeah. It is a good song. And most people, that's the one I usually perform. Mm -hmm. That inspired that same, like, Frank Ocean inspired that song. Mm, I feel okay. that. And so trying to write a sequel to it, once I had the sequel done, or just the concept of it done, going back for the original song, and knowing I had a radio edit to still kind of mix it. You know what's kind of crazy? What's up? Is, I don't know if you feel the same way, or if you'll understand where I'm coming from for this, but whenever I heard Sneeze, it almost gave me a Jaden Smith vibe. Really? Mm -hmm. See, I get, I get mixed vibes in terms of who I'm compared to. So mm -hmm. it's usually Kid Cudi off rip, which I don't mind, especially for my early stuff. It was definitely a Kid Cudi vibe. For, it's, for a person who didn't listen to Kid Cudi at all. Yeah, it gave me a Jaden Jaden vibe and an X vibe, low key. Re the X is definitely influential mm -hmm. to me, at least. Uh, fucking love that guy. RPS. Especially whenever that beat dropped and everything. Y'all gotta listen to that motherfucker so y'all really know what we talking about. Hey. But yeah, whenever that beat dropped and shit, I was like, yeah, this is hard as fuck. I appreciate that. But no, I knew when I was gonna do something else for that already. And I was already hitting CJ up about the book illustrations. Because mm -hmm. that's right. number one what I was gonna do. And I feel weird about like hitting my friends up for collaborative uh endeavors I, mm -hmm. I still like have that anxiety when it comes to it but I why feel like it's weird i feel i don't like being a burden to people and as a creator i know you already have a million things that you're trying to create and put together and put out on your own so you may welcome the idea of collaborating but some people don't know how to collaborate that's number one mm -hmm. and number two when you finally do that's extra work off rip so if you don't plan on executing or if you don't come to the person right, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, with the, in my mind, if you don't come with a finished product or something that's already tangibly put together, it, you're, you're asking someone to put more energy into something, which if they want to collaborate, they will, but it's just something, that, it's a lot to ask for without knowing what the other I see, that's so crazy to me because I feel like with friendships, like, it would be so much more easier that way because it's not like business. It's not like... I'm just always in my head about it because I'm still going to think it through. Mm -hmm. You feel me? And so when I think about the pieces, it's like, okay, how can you fit? How can I fit? Before I even come to you. Because when I come to you, I want to come to you with a finalized, like, blueprint uh -huh. of how we can put it together. So if you have any questions, we can, like, put those questions together. Right. And so it took me probably two or three months. I was in Memphis at the time and was outside smoking a blunt. I was just like, man, I hadn't smoked in a while. And I was just like, you know what? Feel like that shit. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go for it. So to, to kind of go off of what you were just saying um, with like kind of how it's kind of strange with working with them, some of the people that you call your friends and stuff like that. But I don't know, like... I, I don't know. Like, the work itself is, it doesn't feel like work, but I know there are other things around it. Right. That you have to have thought out so that way, one, you aren't wasting time when you get together and try to think it out. But I feel as if, like, with this whole, honestly, with this whole podcast shit, honestly, like, off of set, me and you were really good friends, but yeah. honestly, I feel like, it, I mean, if I'm being real, I feel like our friendship relationship and like our business relationship are in two completely different boxes and they always, and are. They always are and they always should be but you know with, what I'm saying? with creating 
And CJ, I I don't think I don't know if you can fully relate to this yet because you, like you said, you don't like to uh, monetize your your art yet. Right. I guess. But what do you mean by that? I, I just don't know. Uh, I just don't get into the marketing side of things so much. Like I just I kind of understand it, but it feels almost like I don't. You know how people are about like their own work. They're just like this isn't quite to my yeah. vision yet. So like, even if somebody thinks like, oh wow, that's really neat, like that's cool, you think to yourself like, oh okay, yeah, you but like give me another year or whatever. Not only that, do you but selling like, your art, too. right? Do you feel like you're working on an unfinished project? Do you like with anything that you're working on? Do you feel like it's an unfinished project that doesn't need to be put out to the public yet? Um, Is it how you feel? Kind of. I mean, honestly, a lot of artwork that I do, if I lose steam, so some some of like what. I do in my process is just that hyper focus, just uber dedication, like five hours until your hand literally can't hold a pen, mm-hmm. kind of thing. And I, I dig it. I used to dig it more than I do now because my hands hurt <laughs> and my wrist hurts. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that I just, I kind of, I took a break. I got too tired. It was 3 a.m., whatever. You come back to it, you cannot pick it back up. It's like some stuff you can, most stuff you can't. And, and I'll go ahead and add it. Oh, no, you're good. Just, like, there's, there's like, a lot of stuff that I wish I finished, but it, it didn't get finished. And I still put it out on Instagram just to, like, to, it's it's all uh, to remind myself later. Like, hey, this is what, this is the things that you struggled with then. This is what you're good at now. This is the things that you kind of, like, forgot to do. Now, do you ever feel like that you're holding on to stuff that you feel like you need to put out? Because I feel like a lot of people deal with that. Like, I feel like they have so much good shit that they could put out easily, but they just hold on to it, sitting on it, feeling like they need to, I don't know, brush up on it more. What do you mean put out? So... Essentially what I'm meaning is, do you feel like there's any projects that you have com- fully completed, fully are done with, that you feel like, I don't want to put that out yet because the world's not ready for that shit yet? Oh, I got you. I, um, great question. I don't think I think about that too much because as long as it's archived, like it's out there and it's ready, somebody's, like, you know, I mean, the Beatles were ahead of the time, the, um... And the Rolling Stones were a bit ahead of their time. Like, there was a couple different bands. I mean, freaking Zeppelin in the beginning was a, yeah. uh, was way ahead of their time. Um, and, and the list goes on, you know? Like, we could just sit here talking about that. But there, uh, yes, there's tons of stuff that I end up putting out, didn't think it was complete. There's a couple things that just sit around in my notebook, and I, like, I have, a, like, an anticipated date of release. And then sometimes I break away from that and just say, screw it. And, you anticipate release dates because, like, on occasion, yeah. to answer your question from my perspective, like, I definitely feel, especially with music, that there are things that I can't put out. Yet. Right. Because yeah. one, the time, the, not necessarily the timing, the concept, and just the work that goes into to creating one of six. You feel me? So when I say one of six, when it comes to music, we make a single, and when I'm thinking of a specific one right now, actually, that I've shown a few people, and they. All the responses to it is like, yo, this is great. We need to put this out. And that's just feedback going into, okay, that's done. And we, we're on the right track. But we always create a type of content more than just a single. Mm-hmm. And you feel me? Like, the project, the experience. So if that's good, we need to continue working on the next thing. So I can't put that out yet, even though it's finished, even though it's ready for the world to hear. The world isn't ready for it mm-hmm. in the grand scheme of things, in the grand scheme of how... As a creator, we want to create it and put it together, which is always why, what I was getting to when you were saying the marketing, creating and business go together. Because, CJ, if this was your life, if drawing was your life, you'd have to be a starving artist, or you'd have to yeah. live the experience of being a starving artist until you have, have done that. <laughs> make a living off of your art. Yeah. So the fact that it's still like a pastime in more of a way of self-expression for you. It's it's a bit more free. You don't have to worry about the marketing, like you were saying, the business side of things, right. which taints. Taint your, very much so. Taints yeah. your creativity. It taints how you see what you create. It morphs the person you are in the beginning when you first start out doing something. Mm-hmm. So when it comes to those points where it's like, hey, I can put this out, not only from a creative standpoint, but from a business standpoint, I can't just put this out yet, because. Even though there are things that you can just put out, there's also 
the release around how many people get to see it, the exposure behind it, the marketing. Especially with music. I'm not sure if it's the same translation from, from For visual art. art. It, is, to it, music. it totally is. So, I mean, visual, so they're both art, mm-hmm. but like music versus visual art is so, so wildly different in the way that you uh, perceive it or experience it. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, uh, music, you've got something that's happening over time, you've got that extra dimension involved. Yeah. But in like art, unless you see it, which is the whole reason I time lapse these, unless you see it unfolding over time, it just looks like, bleh, you know, it's just like there. And um, <laughs> you don't think of them as standalone pieces. So I do like to show people the the process as well. I I think that's the best way to enjoy it because that's how I'm enjoying it, and like that's part of the reason that I think it's so fun is like I make a shape, I go and I meticulously fill in that shape. Like think of like a five year old coloring it. <laughs> Like stuff is like, oh, there's a nice like I'm I'm making the coloring book and then I'm filling it in one at a time and mm-hmm. instead of just it all being like this is a color this is a color I'm like all right I want to do stripes here I want to do you know loops or Some spirals hashing. here yeah, yeah or, or hashing or um you know this whole shape right here is gonna be filled with triangles did you like coloring books as a child no 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 I I actually hated it I hated the idea that something was already set out for me I mm-hmm. wanted a really? blank piece of paper and I wanted to just fill it up with whatever I had to offer. Fucking Socrates as a kid. <laughs> fucking trying to enjoy it. Enjoy the coloring book. I didn't like them either, but not for that reason. It was just... Oh, why? Yeah, I don't know. It felt... I guess it does kind of fall under that, but it was just the fact that it was a coloring book and I had to... There was, It felt like specific colors that I had to like, yeah. draw and everything. It, it, felt, it, it, it To me, it felt pointless. It was like, after I get done drawing yeah. this, what is, like... The fuck am I doing? Like, because <laughs> nah, I get like going to the restaurants and they give you like if you're yeah. if you're a kid they give you the the restaurant color book, coloring books. Those you, I used to fuck those. Like, <laughs> you're even to Fridays. You ever yes. seen Fridays, bro? Yes. Fridays have the best coloring no, books. No, Ruby Tuesdays has the best coloring book experience. <laughs> Hands down. Hands down. I hadn't seen Ruby Tuesdays. Oh, I just remember Fridays and all the fucking animals that they had. Yeah, Ruby Tuesdays. All I can remember is O Charlie's. O Charlie's. See, whenever I went to O Charlie's, I was yeah, yeah. I was grown ass man at that point. I was fourteen. I was. Yeah, couldn't you I write can't. on the tables at, at O Charlie's? No, no, no. no, that no was, which uh, was the one that you could write on the tables? Uh-huh. You could write on the tables at home. I always think of like Foot Yeah, stuff like that. Foot Ruckers? Fud yes, Ruckers? definitely Fuddruckers. You could do it there. I've never been to Fuddruckers. Never been to Fuddruckers. I just yeah. like the name. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I got sick as hell off Fuddruckers one time in uh, Destin, yeah. Florida. <laughs> Damn. Destin, shit, fuck that location. <laughs> Destin, shit. You ever been to Munchie, or, um, not Munchies, um... Yeah, I've had the munchies. I've <laughs> had the munchies. Handful times. Um, shit, munchies. Frenchies. It's called Frenchies. Oh, Frenchies. Yes. I've heard That's it. what got me sick as hell in Florida. Oh, and it's big oh, in Florida. Right, right. You super it's big a, in Florida. It's a chain? Uh, yeah, I think Travis Scott mentioned Frenchies on his song. He was like, she thinking Frenchies, but I'm thinking Ocean Prime. Yeah, but that's yeah. like a template for like Ocean Prime is like, that's in Orlando and shit like that. Like, that's some Florida shit. Yeah. Same with Frenchies. I didn't know. I didn't mm-hmm. know. Shout out to rappers putting things on. <laughs> the fact that he has a Sprite commercial, I fucking love that for him. I oh, mean, that's classic. That's cemented in Call history. Call like me <laughs> Call like me in the sun. I just sound the headphones for you guys. It didn't sound terrible, but I, you know, I wouldn't say do it again. Um, but anywho, I'm definitely about to. <laughs> but that's, yeah. that's cool though yeah I, I definitely I think I pour so nowadays I pour a lot more effort into my music cause like I will definitely wear myself out sitting in front of a computer screen I mean you know I was always late to this cause I was mixing music in just my towel mixing sessions can be uh, what's the word like the uh, hypnotic they can be hypnotic they can be uh time dilating like yes. you can just get three hours of oh. work done and then suddenly your fingers hurt from typing and clicking you and your back what it's, time it is yeah yeah and you're like oh shit like i have a class like in like 20 minutes uh and i'm naked or whatever the fuck <laughs> 
But you know you're up to something when you're doing it. Like, because it wouldn't take right. your time and attention like that if you weren't doing... It's if you weren't on the right track. Yeah, if you weren't accomplishing something. Like, there are songs, like, especially if you're trying to make a new beat. Mm-hmm. And you know when the beat is going somewhere. And so you're meticulous. You're still working on it before you switch to another one. Before you gassed out with that beat. How long have you been making beats? Uh, about a year and a half, roughly. How hard is it to get into making beats? I think you just started making beats as well not too long ago. So how, how hard is it? Mind, I'm still mainly just the writer. I did it so I could understand, like, the... Yeah, that, help yeah. Eli with the mm-hmm. side of stuff. And, I, yeah, and I don't write so much, but, I, I mean, I write on occasion. It's mostly comedic stuff. Um, I think it's... So definitely, like, the, the uh, threshold or whatever is pretty high, but once you're past, like... Once you can navigate a doll to the point that you can uh, confidently put on effects on like on a channel on an audio channel, you can open up new channels and navigate to like different either uh, stock synths or any sort of like plugins that you bought, uh, that sort of thing, and you are confident about uh, plugging in an external instrument and getting a recording going with that. Those are like three. Basic principles. Well, well, what that software? And knowing, that and knowing the mixing space. <laughs> right. Well. And what, yeah. what software you're using? Now? How do you feel about like FL and stuff like that? I think FL is super cool. I don't quite understand it yet. I do watch some like tip videos. That's another they have thing a lot too. of redundancy in terms of tools and just really? stuff. That, like it's way too much in a sense to where you think that oh I can't use that because I don't know what it does yet. But in reality, it does the exact same thing. Another way that you would right. Use it. So, yeah. I'm not completely sure why, but my choir director used to use FL Studios all the time. Okay, that's interesting. Why? You would think Pro Tools if you're doing exactly. anything with voices. Exactly, but he would use FL all the time. I have some Pro Tools plugins actually. Really? They work great in FL. Yeah, I, so. I, I use Logic, and I think like uh, in a lot of ways, Logic and Ableton are extremely similar for mm-hmm. production, and then like uh, Pro Tools, it makes sense to me. It's kind of like Audacity on steroids. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, freaking r- right, yeah. but FL dude doesn't quite make sense. It's kind of, so I used to think that Logic was more like a canvas where you could paint the sounds that you wanted. That's but now that about FL. really, mm-hmm. yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Like now that I've seen FL, and you got a whole like it's in it, it, Ableton, you've got this workspace, like a playground workspace. I've got all of this. Um, you got this playground workspace where you can like test out new ideas or whatever. That's super cool. You can do the same thing in FL, and then you can just like select a brush tool and literally paint that pattern, no matter what instrument channel. Uh, FL is actually really cool. Ableton, now that I've been you have looking more hotkeys. Like I've been messing around with Ableton. That. It's and as a person who does computer science and loves hotkeys, they make life so much easier. In F in Ableton, if you do the wrong, if you do the same hotkey twice. You could potentially fuck up everything that you just <laughs> command Z control Z. Yeah, and then after you try to undo it, only undoes like two or three times and only specific. Damn, times. it's very complicated. Where did we leave off? Coming at your line. Coming at your line. No, but for what did we leave off? We were talking about uh, we were talking about music. Sneeze. We were talking about sneeze. We were talking about uh. Yeah, we went to a tangent about like how music, the mixing of certain music. But yes, yeah, we were talking about FL as like a canvas. FL, 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 yeah. But, but I don't even touch FL, to be honest with you. It just recently came to be available for Mac OS, which is cool. I, mean, I, I love that. I never knew it wasn't. Yeah, yeah, for the longest time, you couldn't get FL unless you had a Windows computer. Wow. wow. For I mean, still, you can't get Logic or GarageBand without it. True, that. yeah, those are just exclusive. And I used to hate that because I. They're exclusive to Mac? Mm-hmm. Is it OS uh, application? Wow. Mm-hmm. But, and uh, I don't think there's any way, at least that I know of, you, you can run emulate. Mac OS on Windows. You cannot emulate either the OS or the application. Damn. Yeah. Apple and their like being a sole proprietorship. That's one of the benefits because it makes people come back to it. But at the same time, you can't just get your uh, license creation out like that. So me as a person, when I was first starting out, I was trying to use Logic and everything because that's what Eli used. That's what nice. a lot of people use. Right. But I don't have a Mac, and I'm not getting a Mac. You can have <laughs> FL Studios on Macs though, right? Now, now you can. Now you, you can. Couldn't for like. Probably six, seven years of it existing. Right? When? When did that around. change? Yeah. Like literally, probably this year or like 2020. Wow. Yeah. Damn, I didn't know that. So, whenever I was in high school, 
and I, I thought this was such a good idea. They gave all the students like these little these little MacBook Airs. Like they're like the little versions of the minis, yeah. the MacBook Air minis. They gave all the students those, and you got to keep those or whatever if you want. Oh, them. sick! That's right. cool. Right. I already had like a, a, a computer, so I didn't keep mine. You had to pay like an extra little bullshit. It wasn't oh, much. Okay, okay. It wasn't much at all. Like, I figured because they wouldn't. Just yeah, like, exactly. It was like maybe like sixty five dollars you had to pay or something. Oh, that's so cheap. Yeah. Yeah, so like it was, it was bullshit. Like, yeah, as long as you pay the little fee, you can keep it. Mm -hmm. But it was for like college students that were going into college. They have something yeah. to go with them to college. How do y'all feel about it? I felt like that was such a good ass idea so to my school is a laptop. Started doing that, but not with laptops. It was with iPads. And after we fucking left mm -hmm. and everything. Uh, <laughs> and that's why I thought that FL was always available on new. No. Because I felt like niggas had the FL on their laptops. Damn. Now, if it was a Mac at that time, apparently it wouldn't have been. But mm -hmm. it was a Mac I will say sure. doing that, that's that's one of the responsibilities of a school, in my opinion. Because mm -hmm. then you're not making it a individual basis type of thing where mm -hmm. this household could have this, this household could have, right. could have that. When if I need this for school, and you're the school, and it's a public school. Public school, right. Give that shit to me. I, and I don't have to keep it. You can request it back. It could be like a textbook when you give that right. shit to me and sign it out to me. Sign me out a laptop the same way you do now. Like most schools do it now. But it shouldn't be one of those things where one school has it and another school doesn't. You feel me? Because now, now you're giving public education incentives that other people don't. Which I get it if you, in order to... <clears throat> install that type of policy they yeah. have to test it out in different areas but my parents were kind of trifling right. like I, I had the option to go ahead and take that mm -hmm. mini like laptop or whatever from my school but they were like hell no nah. like you you gonna take all your graduation money you gonna buy you a laptop <laughs> okay. yeah they, they made me take all my graduation money and buy a laptop parents do that shit to try and i get it's character building mm -hmm. in a way and like my when I was younger, actually, uh, my school did this in a sense, but it was more so they gave us a laptop to do this specific program. Right. To get some credit or whatever the fuck we were doing. But my mom had me do that, and at the end, you got to choose to keep the laptop. My mom was like, well, someone else less fortunate could use that laptop. And I was like, what the mm, fuck? That's the same way. way. That's the same way my parents thought. <laughs> what the fuck are we doing? We, right we could have used that laptop. I could have been on... Granted, when I was younger, I was in the computers like I still do now, but way heavier and primarily, so I was doing a lot of fuck shit on computers. <laughs> I get why she didn't get it for me then, but nigga, that excuse she gave. What you mean by fuck shit on the computer? So, <laughs> piracy? No, 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 no. Not piracy. <laughs> I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't pirate stuff until. You know what, Mom? I actually really didn't pirate stuff until the PSP when I would pirate games technically. Uh -huh. but, yeah. I would like set up different hacking stuff and like just trying to learn about it. So I was doing it in school, so I'd be coding and everything. And so I tried to do it at home, and she, I guess she thought I was bullshitting, but she didn't like me playing games on her computer. And I figured out how to install like, number one get password parental restrictions and everything. So I would install shit into the computer, and I'd come back the next day and be deleted. I'd be like, what the fuck, bro? Did she delete the game? So I had to go back in and install the game because I'm not done with thinking it just deleted out of nowhere or it reset. This is what, this is, I started taking it to head whenever my mom would say, Hey, parents are kind of smarter because looking back, I'm like, hey, what the fuck are you doing? She, what I'm just you doing? doing? I would name my username, my name, and shit like that, like front to log on to the computer. So you know how you can see how many users are logging on. They said like username, Kristen. Like, it would be a largest icon. But you know, trial and error, I learned how to hide icons and stuff. So I started learning out system configuration files from trying to be sneaky and shit like that. Trying to be sneaky. Trying to be sneaky. You can hide files easier on Windows than Mac, I will give it that. And see, the operability you have in the Mac, uh, or not with the Mac, but with the Windows, that's the only reason I'm never going to Mac. Then again, you also can't make Mac OS shit itself. There is no System 32 to you, delete. You also can't do that to me unless I'm on a porn site or on some crazy watch. You get a virus, a virus execute, delete yeah. System 32. But 
Yeah, no, that's fair. And they do make viruses for Macs. And like, there's a bunch of myths that are out there that's just like, Macs are so great. Macs are, it's just another tool, man. It's just yeah, like, Steve Jobs. you don't use, I mean, yeah, you could make a hole with a drill press or a hand drill, but there are just certain situations where you need a hand drill, and sometimes you need the steadiness of a drill press. It's yeah. Like, whatever. Feel that. Well, this is a little off topic, man. But... De- definitely. <laughs> Um, so, I just wanted to know, bro, like, so, what do you feel like you wanted to, like, I guess, uh, capitalize more on? Do you feel like you wanted to kind of go towards, like, a more artistic route? Or do you feel like they both work hand-in-hand with each other to where, like, you have to be doing both at the same time? But both what? Like, artistic versus music? Like, visual versus, art versus music, yeah. Visual oh, okay, art versus, okay. like, actual, like, audio art. Gotcha. Question. Yeah, right now, I'm kind of focused on, uh, on music, on music, definitely. Okay. Um, I've just been exploring that, and I, I feel like I've been uh, dipping my toes into different genres. Like, I mean, I made a, a drum and bass track like before I went to bed the other night, mm-hmm. and uh, like literally laying in my bed. So I got this little sampler on my phone. You can just play and stuff. Uh, make your own. He showed it to me. It's pretty good. Time. Yeah, it's it's honestly super fun, and it's, I mean, it's just on the go. It's so mobile. Uh, but yeah, like checking out drum and bass, like I, I've even considered here recently trying to like do something new in techno because you know techno is super basic, you know. Um, <laughs> like just trying to find new ways to kind of like <laughs> Jay Z memes. I love you. <laughs> Jay Z meme is hilarious. That's, that's what I need when I be doing this shit right here. Yeah, Jay Z nigga. Was, he was hitting it like so. <laughs> Uh, no, you're good, you're good. So, so yeah, like just trying to find new ways to implement my personality into into these different genres. Because they're all like, I enjoy them for different reasons, but I'm kind of trying to like make new genres. Or I, I know a lot of people are trying to do that, but kind of like watching YouTube videos, like, oh, you used this technique, like, oh, you used a gate to like make this choppy rhythmic section whereas like before it was just a wall of sound like oh that's super fucking cool subtractive synthesis all that sort of thing i don't know that's just it fascinates the hell out of me and i think uh this isn't my quote this is my dad's and i'm sure it's someone else's before his but if if you're not learning you're dying yeah and so like i just constantly want to be learning because otherwise i'm aware of that fact and i feel like i'm dying (laughs) that's why i'm fascinated with that's what fascinated me with music when I first started. Because there's so much you don't know, and I would love to learn. So coming to it, it was one of those things, especially after meeting you and hearing your style of music versus the style I was learning versus the style I was coming to with Sean yeah. and Eli, just the group. Uh, the different, there's no right way to make music. Right, but theory the, is theory. The different ways you get that hole versus the drill press versus the hand. Right, so, right. It's the same, this kind of answers your question too in terms of like the different DAWs and everything, but just the, the knowledge itself. Because if you know one thing in one DAW, you can do the exact same thing in the other. It's just learning how that DAW does it, if that makes sense. And t- yeah, tons of it is cross compatible or cross platform or whatever. Yeah. It's just like EQs across the board are the same. Like cross plugins, so like. Uh, a static EQ versus a dynamic EQ. You can right. do the exact same things that you do with a static EQ and a dynamic EQ. You can't just, you just can't do that, uh, vice versa. Right. And then, to be honest with you, I didn't know how a dynamic EQ works. I just automate my EQ. It's a, it's a compressor and an EQ at the same time. So oh, okay, okay. I invested in some pretty decent, like, bass plugins that plugins? do... No, so this one's called TDR Nova, and okay. the compressor itself that I got standalone was TDR Kotelnikov. It's really good. Okay. I don't use anything else. Uh, but the dynamic compressor, uh, dynamic EQ, it works as an EQ and a compressor at the same time. Sick. So say you wanted to cut EQ out a certain sound, and you wanted it to cut it harsher without muddying the actual right. waveform. Yeah, yeah. You could tell it to, okay, I'm going to cue it right here, and then have it cut or boost in a certain range. It, uh, almost certain like range. a multi-presser or like a exactly. side chain. So it becomes a multi-man compressor, but it's still an EQ at the same time. Okay. It's an cool. EQ at its base level, and then it, be, it has a compressor built into it, which allows multi-man compressing yeah. functionality. But there is just there's just so much to learn in music. I mean, that's specifically like that little 
tidbit that we just talked about is um, is mixing stuff and like audio engineer stuff. But then even outside of that, in like just solely looking at composition, there is so much to be had with like diving into classical music theory versus. I mean, uh, I kind of was obsessed for a little while with microtonal music mm. theory. Now I don't understand the math behind it whatsoever. You start stacking eight notes, and only one of them is in like your regular A B C D E. Uh, Using that for uh, vocal mixing, like so I had I studied a bit of music theory just to be good at auto tuning. Sure. And so when you use classical uh, audio, I call them configurations because I'm a fucking scientific guy. <laughs> but using different. Uh, Theories of music, so like Mixolydian yeah. and Dolby, yeah, yeah. For, using, for and that. using yeah. that for the not your typical uh, tuning measure would be good. So if you wanted to sound like uh, Young Thug, but you do opera music, like you don't have to use the same audio presets and whatever tuning plugin that you're using, that knowledge still applies. Mm -hmm. Still applies. So you feel me? You go from being able to just use the chromatic scale to the Mixolydian scale, the Dorian scale, the different types of scales out there to come up with some new shit that someone hasn't done yet or a new type of sound. Or the exact same sound, just a different way that suits how you how you do it. Just something unique. Just something unique. Yeah, man. Yeah. But I want to say, number one, thank you for coming out here. We're yeah, about to absolutely. run over time in a bit. But before we get out of here, I want to wanna hear more about like monotype or mentotype. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, you just dropped an EP. What? Where, what are you doing with that? Yeah. So anti-inflammatory music. Um, it was a pretty fun one. I uh, I wasn't sure. So I've, I've got a couple other stuff. I'm sorry, bro. Music. Just really, 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 really quick. What does anti-inflammatory like like music mean? Yeah. Like, so what does that mean? That's the title, right? Yeah. 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 No. That, I mean, yeah. But like the title, like, what does that mean? Yeah. Um, so, you know, like how you take ibuprofen or you got a headache? Yeah. That's a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medication or drug. Right. In, in said. Um, and basically, like, inflammation is just irritation. And, you know, like, I, mean, I think we all get irritated sometimes. Like, I, like we're, we're intelligent people. Uh, and sometimes, like, stuff. And, and so you ain't gonna get tired of this shit. <laughs> this is anti-inflammatory. You're not gonna get tired of this shit. You're not gonna get irritated with this shit. Well, it's, None of it's that. to like help you like ease irritation. It's all just like mm. off the cuff and super uh, relaxed and casual. I guess like the beats themselves are are hard, not relaxed. But um, but the the content, I guess, it's supposed to be mm. relaxing. Like you can come into it pissed off, and you can leave like bopping. Mm. So that's that's the kind of idea. Is like this is the music that calms your in inflammation. Okay. Did you approach it with in your creative process? Like, hey, I'm making this with the sole intent that when you leave it, it's to be relaxed, regardless of how hard the drums hit and everything like that. Uh, yes, because I came up with I was like just high the other night, maybe it was a, about a month ago or so, and that's usually how it starts. I just came up. I was like anti-inflammatory. Don't know if it's the other night or a month ago. And <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. No, exactly. It, uh, and so I just wrote down anti-inflammatory music because I'll just come up with possible, you know, single EP album names, whatever. Yeah. And, and then I do what? No, I have a whole note in my phone specifically for that. Exactly. Like you just when you have, you never know when the inspiration is gonna hit. So you just gotta write it down. Yeah. And so I wrote it down and I left. I leave these pages open on my journal. In my journal, I got like probably five, six journals. And I just, if I think of something, I'll leave it open and leave it just on the desk. Mm -hmm. And so I constantly see it. So I won't forget about yeah. it. What do you, what is it that kind of, do you think it's specific things that kind of get your like, uh, I guess, um, creative juices flowing? Like, because I feel like, which is super weird, I used to rap, like, when I was in high school, and every time I'd go to the grocery store, I'd leave the grocery store with so many bars. I'd walk through a grocery store yes. and just bar after bar after bar. I'd be like, yo, why the fuck? But it'd be every time I go to the grocery store, I just get hella bars for some That's weird reason. Crazy. I mean, and, and same thing with any type of function, anything where it's washing hella dishes. people. For me, it's always washing dishes. Any type of right. function will just 
be like, shit, okay, there goes a whole bunch yeah, of... Oh, you meant like function, like you're out, like a social... Like, like, type function, like, like any, anywhere where it's a whole lot of people walking around. Or a whole lot of hoes. Either, either a whole lot of hoes or just a whole lot of people. Because Memphis has so many events where there's so many people there. So you just catch certain, certain vibes from there. And I felt like whenever I would go to the... The grocery store. I just be walking past so many people and see seeing so many different types of people yeah. and like seeing so many different types of lifestyles and shit like that. And kind of, cause I feel like with sometimes you could look at somebody at the grocery store and be like, I know exactly what the fuck your ass is looking yeah, for. Yeah. <laughs> so I feel like with them different yeah. type of vibes and lifestyles that I'm passing by, I'm like, damn, I got bars for y'all ass right now. <laughs> what is it for you that makes you feel that way? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I mean, definitely skate a little bit kind of like the freedom of um, you were asking me longboarding versus skating earlier I'm I'm big on the whole just like don't bomb a hill necessarily for the speed just kind of like carve it you know like right get get as deep into it and dig and make your thighs burn and that sort of thing I don't know when, when you're uh, so caught up and like focusing on I saw a skate barefoot right so you don't want to wreck right. and yeah just I, I never want to wreck because I know that's going to just be horrible um, so I'm constantly focused on, you know, do, should I run this stop sign? Can I, can I hear a car around the corner? Like, I skate with headphones on, so I'll pull a headphone off and be like, no, I can't hear anything. Or if it's dark-ish at night, be like, I can't see lights. Generally, I don't skate at night, but anyways. Um, so, like, that sort of thing. You, you're focused on something else, and that leaves this other, like, part of your brain to just wander without any parameter whatsoever. And when that happens... It always ends up that when I snap to, I'm like, okay, I'm cool, I'm safe. I've read, ridden this route. I'm gonna like, you know, kick a couple times, push or whatever, hop back on, and that last thing that was in my head, other than skating, pops up. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's cool. Sometimes if I'm listening to music, it's like, all right, cool. Like he took the kick out, and it's like an arrangement thing, right? That's what I've been focused on here recently. It's just like how to arrange to build tension, to release that tension, to like create a new mind space for somebody else uh, or not somebody else but just like a new mind space entirely from the original beat just ma taking you through these uh, this like dance in your head this emotional dance um, so that's that's what I've been thinking about recently is how people do arrangements but sometimes other things too like I'll be thinking about what I need to do later on that day like oh yeah I love my laundry in the freaking washer like it's gonna get sour out of it and turn back and go put it in the dryer so stuff like that anything that I'm doing that keeps me active Helps me be productive in other things as well. Mm. Definitely. Okay. I used to hate washing. Like, I still do hate washing dishes. That's the one chore I don't like. But it's because it's a bittersweet feeling. It's because I know how peaceful my mind I am. Like yeah. at my base when I'm washing dishes. Okay. And it's kind of the same kind of same like flow state where your brain is focused on one thing but able to escape in another and wander because i would write my best stuff wow well not even write it i would think of my best stuff while i'm doing dishes but my hands would be wet and right. <laughs> the only thing i would have to, to write down what i just came up with and that's after going through a whole like 16 of just the hardest shit i've already <laughs> said but i should be writing this down i would try to write it down can't fucking get it because my hands are wet so it's messing with what I type or trying to remember what I said. How do you capture what you come up with in between those moments of like focus and unfocus? Yeah, I love those monotonous like rhythmic things. Like trying to skate pattern things. Um, you can't write and skate. I mean yeah, so like having like sweaty hands or whatever from skating makes would make it difficult. Uh, Siri's my best friend, dude. I <laughs> you use Siri. I use Siri to make notes all the time, and I can uh, I can trigger Siri for. You my wouldn't watch. even be able to do it, bro. Like my, this, my this nigga Siri is just like Italian or some shit. <laughs> oh, that's so. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a rap in Italiano in order for her to pick it up, and she still wouldn't get it. I don't know if it's, <laughs> she still. I don't know if it's my actual speaking of Italian or if it's a Siri like, hey, Siri can't understand what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. But she never, unless I'm asking about the time or the weather, she. Never knows she saying. never knows what the fuck I'm saying. Yeah. If it's skating, I'll just hop off. Like, if I feel like it's novel enough, I will just hop off the board and write that shit down and then keep going. And it'll just, it'll keep coming. As, it, when you, it's like a, what's that? Uh, whenever females or males, for that matter, are drinking and, like, they, they pee the first time, 
Yeah. Uh, breaking the seal. Yes. Yeah, that. Like once you get that first idea written down, your seal's broken, mm -hmm. and now the ideas can just keep coming. He's what never. You're not a drinker, drink? bro. What the fuck you're not is a that? I'm not about to just skip past that. <laughs> you're not a drinker, so you wouldn't get it, bro. All right. What is it? So whenever you, yeah, whenever you're drinking a lot and shit like that. You have to piss, obviously, because yeah. it's a bunch of fucking alcohol you put in yourself. So it's like, get this shit the fuck out of me. So you have to pee all the time. Oh. Yeah. Oh. But whenever you break the seal, you have to pee more frequently. Yeah. But whenever you yeah. hold it, it's like, it's not as bad. So whenever you break the seal, it's like, okay, you're just going to have to fucking pee over and over and over and over again from okay, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You broke broken the seal. Breaking the seal. But with ideas. Yeah. <laughs> I swear, I probably, when it comes to ideas... Because my state of coming up with the best stuff is driving. Okay. And that's the most that. dangerous. At nighttime? <laughs> Not even at night, like during the day. Nighttime, or night drives is oof. Whenever. I just, it's just, I don't know what it is. It'll just be random. I don't have to be listening to the music. I don't have to be thinking about my own music. And it'll just come to me. I gotta write. Because I'm thinking of shit as I'm saying it. Or just thinking it. And then go, oh shit, now I gotta write it. And I will write the fuck out of some bars while I'm driving. Oh, me. I don't. Because I use that's the slide scary. function <laughs> on my phone. Oh, and that is actually when cool. When iPhones yeah. added that, I'm yeah. so happy because it's all Android ever really had over it. That and the ability to treat your phone like a computer and manipulate it. But, <laughs> dude, you could do so... You can basically type out everything you want by sliding. And you just don't... You only crash every... You might crash one out of five times. True. <laughs> you feel me? It's also... Sometimes the slide function can be hard to get the right word. Because yeah. it gets a little, it gets a little particular sometimes, especially if, like if like you said you're a scientific person earlier. Mm -hmm. If you're getting really scientific with it and you want to like type out regulations, yeah, they might think you're saying something like fucking irregular or yeah. variation. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like it gets a little dicey. Or it might put regular because you're a series in Italian. You know, fair. <laughs> Fair, fair, fair. But yeah, that's that's pretty much it, man. Just like kind of pouring my heart and soul and focus into music. I did a lot of drawing back in the day, but now it's now it's music, and obviously I, I still draw. I mean, yeah. It's a it's more of a therapy thing than it is like like I wouldn't say that I'm learning all that much. I don't watch art videos. Uh, I just I just do stuff. Tripping and drawing taught me a lot, and uh, talking to my dad and drawing has taught me a lot too. But music-wise, you can do, there's a ton of resources out, just online, uh, that you can find and, and, uh, and watch pretty, pretty particularly and learn just a shit ton in right. one eight-minute video. Mm -hmm. And you watch one of those per day on lunch for three, four weeks, and like you can probably cook up a beat without much trouble. Y'all yeah. heard that, man. Y'all yeah, yeah. better get the fucking work, bruh. <laughs> All y'all motherfuckers that want to, you know what I'm saying, get into making beats and shit like that. Do it. Just, just do it, bro. Just jump into it. Just do it. Well, yo, CJ, I want to thank you again for coming out here, man. That's thank you. Great. I can't wait to have you on the pod again. Yeah. Uh, That'd be sick. When did you drop your, uh, your EP? What was it called again? Uh, Anti-inflammatory. Yeah, anti-inflammatory music. I want to say, like... What is it like May 27th? May 27th. Nice. What, what all is it on? Yeah. Uh, Apple Music, Apple uh, Music, yeah, YouTube, yeah. Uh, Spotify. Yes, sir. Y'all go check that shit out, bro. Yeah. yeah. Miltide. M I N D L E T I D E. Mind the time. Easier to remember that way. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Well, I think we're going to wrap it up here. This Thank is you good. Guys. You guys Alrighty, man. It's good okay. to have this, you on, bro. This is what you did. This is what you did. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Good job. I had to kind of tie it together because I wasn't going to be able to finish it. Easy that thing, bro. That's sick. Don't forget to show the camera, goodness. Oh, yeah. Woo! Local motors. Oh, shit. Hell, yeah. Damn. Sick it. Look, bro. So I'll check that shit out, man. So is it. Hey, yeah, put sir. it on his camera. Put it on his camera. Um, shit. Yeah. Let him know. Yes, sir. Boom. I mean, let's go. Nice. This is a bro. Yeah. Get him on. Get him on. Get him on. Get him on. Sheesh! <laughs> if y'all wanted a scan or whatever, also, actually, you want this? Y'all want this uh, hanging up or whatever? Dude, hell yeah, we can put that shit. Yeah, yeah, we'd love that. Yeah, okay. too. Yeah, I'll, I'll sign it and, uh, and date it, and it, it's yours. Perfect, yeah. bro. We appreciate it, man. For sure, man. Well, thanks for coming out, man. This has been another episode of Local Mode.